<laughs> Lovely. A bit of a goss <laughs> before we're going to jump in. All right, cool. So, um, hi, Sandy. Hello. Thank you for coming in. Thank you I'm for I'm really, me. really excited to learn so many things about you. You've done yeah. so many amazing things. Yeah. You have been modeling for us. We've worked together. Um, you've been writing some amazing scripts. Ooh, you've yeah. been producing some movies. Yes. I mean, honestly, how is that all happening in your head? I have no idea. <laughs> I'm struggling to understand. I really don't know. So today yes. we're going to just like talk a little bit about that. Bit about that. Okay. But if you were going to jump in, do you mind just telling a little bit about yourself? Who you are, what are you doing? Who I am? Okay, <laughs> I am Sandy. I'm an African New Zealander mm-hmm. um, who's very creative and very sporty. And I've always wanted to figure out how I could put my sporty and creativity together. Mm-hmm. And so I guess I'm still very young. I'm still figuring that out. But that's just how I've kind of where you are right where now. I am right now you know I'm trying to I'm getting into yoga mm-hmm. I'm trying to travel a lot um write where I am about mm-hmm. the places that I'm at and yeah so just do that yeah when did you move from New Zealand to London two years ago wow okay yeah. was it for uni or just to kind of explore London it was for uni so mm-hmm. I started straight out for school I went to Sydney and studied for a year mm-hmm. what did you study sorry uh, drama, mm. so screenwriting and mm. screen acting. Uh, I guess Sydney wasn't far away enough, so I went home for a bit, <laughs> and then I told my parents, by the way, I'm moving to London. What did they say? They were like, oh, okay. Just really? didn't really thinking I was, they were oh. thinking I was going to go, but yeah. I, I went. Um, and so I came here, and then I studied for a year, but mm-hmm. it wasn't my thing. I really enjoy learning on my own. Mm-hmm. I find I retain a lot more information, and I'm actually more passionate. But if I have to go every day into a place, mm-hmm. then I lose my passion. And then I'm working as well, which just it wasn't working. Mm-hmm. So I took a year off to travel, to work, and to do my own thing. Mm-hmm. And it's been amazing. You loved it? I've Adored it. I've loved it. Yeah. What have you done this in this year then? This You've done year. So many things. Yeah. I, I mean, every single time I'm checking on you, you're like, yeah, I'm doing this. And yeah, I'm in Lake <laughs> District. And here I'm in Mallorca. <laughs> and I'm just here. And I'm like, <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah, where are you? <laughs> no, like I've traveled a lot with my parents and then by myself. I've done a lot of collaborations um, with Freddie and Asuka. I shot a music video for Asuka. This was last year though. Mm. Um, so that was my first directing thing out of school so mm-hmm. at school we directed um but this was a this was the first thing out of school full on, hands-on experience. full on hands-on it was and it was really interesting because you have all the shots that you want and you've done all the work and nothing really goes how you want it to go I know <laughs> which I was like ah but it worked out and then I did another collaboration we filmed in Lake District um it called the Bohemian, Bohemian Showdown is but that we, like- we changed the name. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it was, did you see it? No. No, so it's been color graded and edited and everything. Just the music mm-hmm. needs to be put into it. Mm-hmm. So it's nearly finished. Um, Is it like a short movie? It's a short film. Right. Yeah, okay, it's short. about three minutes long. Mm-hmm. But it took three full days of craziness. Mm-hmm. It was really cool. We hired some actors. We got the script. We got the um, video to- videographer mm-hmm. um and then we went down to the lake district for three days and shot it and again you have everything planned out and nothing goes to plan nothing absolutely nothing but it always always works out um so how do you deal with those situations situations when you just feel like it's almost like a sand slipping through your fingers you're the one as because i directed it so you're the one that has to keep the glue together yeah. You're exhausted. Everyone else is exhausted, but you have to keep the momentum and the energy because as soon as you let go, everyone else is going to let go. So it was really difficult to keep that high energy and keep the positivity and be like, yeah, yeah, it's fine. Totally bluffing. 100% bluffing the whole time. Um, Fake it till you make it. Fake it till you make it, literally. Um, And so that was really interesting having to figure that out. Um, Mm. But yeah, no. It was good. It was. What was the most scariest thing? What you think? Did scariest? you have like, any any worries when you were going to like district, thinking, okay, what can possibly go wrong? Um, not getting it fully shot. Mm. That was the biggest thing, but we did, and we had a difficulty because the lady who owned like the restaurant um, park thing told us that we had to leave. Oh. And we weren't allowed to sh- uh, shoot in specific spots. 
But of course, I was just like, okay, we'll wait till she leaves. She left. We kept filming. Um, Because you have to. We're not going to. Yeah. Yeah, we have to. Um, We got the shot. But then we got the email and all the complaints, blah, blah, blah. But it's it's fine. You just have to do what you're not meant to do sometimes. You break the rules. So that was the difficult part. But I can totally relate. I think um, coming from the university and where you kind of almost follow the path. Yeah. And you've always been told that you need to stick to the rules. Mm -hmm. And this is the rules you have to follow. Absolutely. And that's what I've done. And I've always been this good girl. Mm -hmm. I've always been known that Carpalina never breaks the rules. Everything's happening. La, la, la. You know, uh, everything by the book. And then when we started doing photography, you need to realize... You just realize very quickly that following rules doesn't is work. Not, it's not going to take you no, anywhere. Absolutely. At all. Yeah. You really physically have to be cheeky. Yes. Have to find you know yes. your inner charm yes. to get yourself out of situations you've never even expected you can be. Absolutely. Um, and just kind of keep doing those things. Yeah. And almost kind of be all right with this because I think the difficult part for me was being okay with this. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Cause, yeah. Because when okay. you are constantly being seen like not a rule play a breaker and now all of a sudden you you really are understanding you're doing this mm-hmm. then yeah i i was i had to you literally had to sit down and be comfort. like okay Polina, this is how it is now you yeah. either have a project done or you, you got it or you don't yeah. and that's it so that was quite an interesting one yeah but now it's almost a little bit now it's it's a part of the job it is yeah it is and people kind of understand they will tell you off but they do kind of understand at, at the same time mm. and I totally agree with you I've always you know never missed school blah blah, blah. and I had to come over that as well yeah. you have to well you have to that's part of the that's part of the deal yeah and when what happened then when you guys shot all this footage what was the scariest thing to kind of come home and look at it was it was it was like what? <laughs> That's not what I envisioned. What envisioned. <laughs> so it's it's really it, it was really funny. It was um it was cool to see. There was a lot of very cool shots, but again, it was like I. But that looked different in my head to the. But it went once everything's edited and color graded, it's completely different to what it was actually originally. To what it door. was, yeah, exactly. So you gotta you gotta take a step back and be like, okay, cool. This is still a canvas. We've still got work to do yeah. and to make it better. But yeah, you have to you have to know that the end product is coming. You can't just expect it now, which is what I've always expected. I expected to shoot this thing and it to look amazing straight away. Mm, no, no it course, needs yeah. work. It needs yeah. uh, more progress. I think what we realized is that every single time we take a project on, yeah, uh, you're like, I'm going to do A, B, C, D, E, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And then... When realistically the time comes in, yeah. you're literally two shots in and they're already taking you three and a half hours. Yes. You really start to realize very quickly how little time you have mm-hmm. and how overachieved you're trying to be. To be. Yeah. Absolutely. Like crazy. Mm-hmm. And then how you're trying to calm yourself down thinking, yeah. okay, yeah. even if you're going to like drop the workload now to 50%. Yeah. <clears throat> sorry, not the workload, but either way, the plan is going to be dropped to 50%. It's Absolutely. still so much work to do. Yes. But I think somehow, as I said, you kind of put yourself together. You just do whatever you can. And yes. I think the most difficult part is the beginning mm-hmm. when you have to set everything up, yeah. when you have to kind of prepare yourself. And then yeah. once you're in the zone, that kind of keeps going. Yeah, exactly. We just recently had a shoot and it was a photo shoot yeah. um, of the product. And we haven't done that for ages. We started with this one. Um, with food photography mm. three four years ago so that was kind of our first photography yeah. steps into the the whole world, photography world, world yeah for me and completely out of the zone we kind of took it on because he's a really good client and we've yeah. been doing video projects for him but he was like hey i need some food pro- 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 <laughs> <laughs> food what photography yeah. yeah and we're like yeah, yeah we're gonna do it so we're just running around getting all the props yeah. like so many props we literally had the full taxi it was full like basil here, garlic you- here, everything just sitting, <laughs> jumbling like this. Like literally five Ikea bags running around on the steps up and down. Before yeah. you even started shooting, you're feeling like you've done a marathon already. Yeah. You know, got, yeah. Yeah. Got all this but then we set up and I remember it was literally four hours since we entered the studio and we are done literally two different compositions. <laughs> and I was like, oh, we're doomed. <laughs> we have maybe another three hours in this place. And we've done And, and then... None. Yeah. Like literally 70% of the job is mm-hmm. not even done yet. You yeah. know, and you're kind of going into this freaky zone and you're like, okay, okay. Well, you have to kind literally... Of stressing, yeah. but you've got to keep it cool, you know, because yeah. you don't want... Yeah. Yeah. So you literally just say, you know, I'm not going to think of the amount of work I have to do. I'm just yeah. going to take literally this composition. I'm yeah. going to work it. And I'm going to move to another composition and I'm going to work it. But eventually I think it's just the... It's not even the patience. It's the... 
resilience that mm. kicks in. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, the last hours before you already know you're so close to the end. Your vision is blurred. Yeah. Energy is zero. Mm-hmm. You know, you're looking at all of this and you're like, I've been staring at this for 10 hours now. I can't. Yeah. There's nothing else coming yeah. to my head. You know, you're, you're, you're <laughs> just drastically scrolling the Pinterest board trying to think, okay, what else have I missed? And then you're like, if it, you know, I'm just going to take some things and I'm just going to play around and see what's going to happen. Yeah. And sometimes it works out and sometimes it doesn't. Mm-hmm. But I think it's just, it was an interesting thing because when people think you're a photographer, they're like, oh, what's the difference? Yeah. You can do this photography, you can do wedding photography, you can Absolute, do landscape no. photography. And you're like, no, no I can try. Absolutely, but... but- <laughs> not, not really. Like, I mean, it's, if it's not my thing, it's not my thing. Exactly. Simple as that. Exactly. So that was a very interesting day. I remember yeah. that. Like next day after that, both of us did not move from the sofa. You just bits of us ordered in, and you're just sitting and staring into blue nothing. Yeah. Like just yeah. trying to get some energy back. Yes. The like, phones are coming in. Do? Emails are coming in, and you're like, no, <laughs> not today. Just to reload. Yeah, literally, you yeah. have to do that. So the question to you then is, when you are in situations like this, how do you... When I was, sorry. Uh, when you are in situations like mm. this, um, how do you reload yourself? Like, how do you get pumped yourself after you had a very stressful shoot, week, shoot, week, week, week. day? I, What's the... I definitely take a day off, mm. 100%. Or if I do have work, I go steady. I go really steady. Um, but Are I you have... quite okay with, like... Managing your energy levels? Yes. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, I'm... I'm... I struggle, that's why I'm asking. Oh, really? <laughs> to be honest, I'm not... I'm drinking coffee now, but I'm not one of those people Kit, that have to function on coffee. Mm. I'm already quite hyper as mm-hmm. is, but um, I have to I have to take a day off. Mm-hmm. I have to sleep. I need my sleep. And then I just read. I spend a day reading or I just kind of walk around like the park or something, mm-hmm. but I definitely don't get off the sofa or out of my bed. Um, but I'm also being very productive because mm-hmm. I'm not someone that can just lie there and sit watch still. TV and sit still. I actually, I'm get, I get quite the nervous, uh, shakes, you know, mm-hmm. not nervous shakes, but just like restless. Take, yeah. Restless. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I have to be feeding my brain something while I'm resting. Wow. So yeah, I just take a day so off. So that's why reading the books is very important to you. Yes. Were you yeah. always reading the books? Yes, I mean, my mum reads like crazy. She reads these thick, I don't know how she does it, these thick books in one or two days. Honestly, it's its a skill I've never been able to conquer, but I hope to one day. Wow. She, just, she just eats eats the books. And mm-hmm. um, I guess we had so many books at home. We had like a little, little huge little shelf library at home. Um, so... Yeah, I've always read. It was always really exciting for school holidays. She'd be like, okay, you can go get two or three books. And it was Aww. so exciting, <laughs> you know. Okay, that's, yeah. that's, good. that's quite cool. Yeah, so, my, yeah. my mum was a little bit different. We Do you guys have the same thing <clears throat> as in Estonia? <clears throat> but I mean, we have like a reading list over the summer oh, that you no. have to go and read certain books. No. And then come September, you then have your like school. reading. Yeah, no. Oh. Then you have your like reading classes and then the teacher will be like, so let's start with Mark Twain. So how was this blah, 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 his adventure? No. And we used to, like, I mean, it used to be a part of, of you know. Yeah, of the, curriculum. It, yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. And then your mum would take you to the library and, and then, oh, no. and then you will bring you like those those packs of books and they're like <laughs> and you're like okay so that's my summer then isn't it <laughs> yeah that's exciting i <laughs> know oh, it wasn't that's the whole thing and i think yeah that just i had kills, to power through that yeah kills, it, kills the passion know? for the reading exactly but there were some books that i really really enjoyed and yeah. even now like years later they're some of them are like very not childish but they mm. are for children but you still can relate and like absolutely and still reread them and i'm like oh because obviously i read them in estonian but Mm. then obviously a lot of authors original books were in english Mm, mm. or in russian so obviously i then go and reread them in a native language if i can Mm, mm. obviously it would be amazing to read some spanish books as well but then again that's a completely different story now i mean like yeah i know like (laughs) i know so um with the books in general we had a massive library at home as well like literally one like my dad's cabinet was like you walk in and it's everything is books yeah. and my mom loved beautiful books so they oh, had to be very beautiful aesthetic. Mm, very aesthetically pleasing so okay. i guess yes i'm not like that i hate hard covers mm. i really don't like hard covers are you like when you're reading the I books are you like ruin the crap out of my books 
<laughs> I'm so bad. Like, honestly, for me, books are to be read and to be devoured and just to, you know, maybe fold the, what's called the doggy ears. Yeah, the ear dog. Like, yeah. Or doggy ears. Yeah. yeah. And like, that's how I read. That's how my mum reads. And my friends are completely opposite. So I lend them my book and they'll have a tiny scratch on it and they'll be like, oh, I'm so sorry, but I ruined your book. And I'm like, what? <laughs> Where? <laughs> you know? But no, no, I'm not a hardcover. I need to destroy it somehow. have it in all different all, all shapes but, yeah, and forms yeah. yeah i guess kindle does not is kindle not does an not <laughs> <laughs> no we broke it yeah but, so yeah but it doesn't have the same feel it doesn't have it the doesn't, smell of it it's no, no. just it's not the same yeah and i'm and I, i'm really like in a dilemma at the moment now because obviously being in london small space you yes. will be moving from a to b sustainability absolutely yeah. plus the books here are obviously much cheaper than they are in Estonia in oh, yeah. general. Mm-hmm. I don't know how it's, is it the same in New Zealand? It's the same, like, it's so cheap here. Yeah. It's so cheap. It's I'm super like, cheap. You're like it's seven, eight, yeah. quit. You're like, oh my God, oh my, all the classics. <laughs> Literally. <gasps> yeah. I yeah. have a friend, same friend, Alice, who lives in Milan. So she's a big Shakespeare fan. Oh, and yeah. then she was just like, hey, Polina, can you just check for me if you have A, B, C, D, E books? And yeah. I was like, yeah, cool. So obviously I sent her a picture of the stand, which mm-hmm. is just for Shakespeare. Shakespeare yeah. She goes, what? excuse me? <laughs> And she's like, how much is the book? And I'm like, well, this is seven, this is eight, this yeah. is 12. She's like, excuse me. And I was like, she was just like, can you get me all of them? And I was like, babe, oh that's God. like 10 kilos. <laughs> I don't think the post office, it's, it's just in that. general, it's not going to work out. Yeah. Like you better just come in here with a very empty seat case and, and just take, take yeah, yeah, exactly. But no, nah, she said like, I'm not coming in. So you better buy me those books. And I have those two big books. Seriously. The whole drama, oh, yeah, the whole drama collection. Uh, collection sitting there. Mm. And the native... <laughs> Uh, Shakespearean language really yeah like mm, but the dialects they have over there because when I dropped her an author's name she was like oh my god he's my idol I was like alright Alice we need to speak we need to <laughs> sound, we need sound, what's yeah. going on because yeah. uh, she was like um, I love Lord Byron and I love oh, Shakespeare I love Byron, yeah. oh I mean yeah so yeah. she's that kind of like I think her master's degree was all about Lord Byron so, really yeah I know she cool. she has yeah kind of uh, written a lot about him so obviously if you need something just so. get in touch with her <laughs> Um, yeah, so I have two books sitting in here, so I need yeah. to send them to the hair. But then um, with the books in general, I think, I, we don't even know what to do then. Like, should we get a Kindle or what, you know? I have my iPad and I buy the books that I just refuse to spend lots of money on. Mm. But it's just, it really is not, I lose interest. It's not the same. Mm. And I wish it was because then... That would be a very good be, answer. Exactly, but yeah. it's not. Mm-mm. And I think I will forever buy uh, physical books. Yeah. Yeah. Don't don't sue me. <laughs> no, yeah, I know. <laughs> know. Oh wow, okay. But then um what's was what's your favorite book you've read you you read a lot lately? Lately? Um so I just finished Nocturnes mm-hmm. and it's uh issue issue sure I can't say his name is Japanese, I think. Um and it's a short story, it's five short stories, all set in Italy. Um about artists so the musicians and they're so it's so interesting the way he writes because you look at these characters and you're like you are so absurd but you were like a heightened version of how we are as humans so he really looks at the human conditions Mm -hmm. um I'm also reading one of his books at the moment never let me go Mm -hmm. and he's all about looking at the human condition and I I really love these books because they don't end how you think they would end Mm -hmm. And he writes his characters very, very interestingly. Is that a word? Yeah. Interestingly. Um, and I don't know, the stories, they're just quite sweet, but sad, but weird. And you're like, it leaves you going, what the f- What? <laughs> but it, yeah, uh, yeah, that's the one I'm reading. That's what I have read at the moment. But really when you're choosing the books, what's, or when what you're really actually, for? yeah. That will be the first question. The second question will be like, if you are, let's say, no, actually, let's answer this question and then come back okay. to the other ones because the other one is like, mm. Okay, I'm a fussy reader. Mm-hmm. So if the first two chapters don't get me, I won't read the rest of it, oh, wow. unfortunately. Mm. Um, at the moment, I'm really looking into getting um, acquainted with who I am as an African woman because mm-hmm. a lot of people say, when I walk into a room full of white people, I'm the whitest person there, blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. And at the moment, I want to know what makes me an African woman. Mm-hmm. And so I've re- – have you read Homegoing? No. Okay. So I've, I've heard of it. <clears throat> yeah, it's <clears throat> amazing. It's so <sighs> – 
mind blown. Mm, yes. <laughs> Mic drop then. Done. It's just, honestly, she takes you, it's very, she wrote it very, very well. She takes you through all these characters who are interlinked together, mm-hmm. but they have all these separate stories about, uh, it dates back from the slave trade all the way up until modern yeah. day oh. now. She does it very, very well. And it was just really interesting to see, because it was set in Ghana, uh, West Africa, um, it was really interesting to see what we went through and how we've evolved. Not we, as in like black people have been through. Mm-hmm. And at the moment, so that's how I choose my books at the moment. Because okay. that's what's interesting me yeah. at the moment mm-hmm. is the African... E- ethnicity? Ethnicity, it, like, History yeah. and history. everything that goes yeah. around it. Well, so, I guess it hasn't been written a lot about it. No. So hence now is that the we time. can see a little bit of that boom happening now. Yeah. now I completely can understand mm. why it would be in them. So yeah. Give me all. Because I want to know what it's all, all about. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. So that's what, that's that's how I'm choosing my books at the moment. At the moment now. Well, yeah. yeah so f- self-discovery through the books. Yes. In a way. Oh, yeah. yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Totally. Oh, that's amazing. I yeah. like that. Self-discovery <laughs> through the books. But then... When you are writing your own characters, mm-hmm. do you then go and read some books to see how those characters are being developed? Or when you're reading the book, do you see some sort of like techniques how writers are using to create yes. a a place uh, where it all takes place? Yeah. For me, I see how they get from A to B. That's mm-hmm. my most difficult part mm-hmm. when writing a script. I'm like, how I know how it ends, but how do I do all the linking and things like that? So that's what I look Mm-hmm. for when I read um uh, wait what was the question <laughs> <laughs> no I think that's what it is yeah it like, like, when you are developing your characters yeah do you use books and yeah. if you use books what are you Definitely. trying to find there in order to yeah, develop your characters everything right okay and, making, and is there different ways of how writers are linking their different ways. Uh, characters yes like from homegoing mm-hmm. she links them through they're all separate separate stories Mm -hmm. but she links them through family and Mm -hmm. situations Mm -hmm. and so it's like when you're shooting for the way to describe it it's like when you're shooting something and then the camera focuses on one thing Mm -hmm. and then continues maybe switches back onto oh i don't know how to explain it i don't know she links it through family and things like that um and that's Mm -hmm. one way and then when i'm reading what else am I reading? Never Let Me Go. Mm-hmm. He is one person describing the whole story. So, so it's, it's going from his back, point of yeah, view. Yeah, point of view going back through memories. So there's just there's so many ways you mm-hmm. can link and it. And what's your favorite way then to do that when you're writing your characters? Uh, I would say, what's my favorite way? What's the way you go to? <laughs> Pretty straight. I like, I don't really, my characters all kind of know each other from the start. So mm-hmm. if I was to write a big script, the characters are slowly introduced. It's not mm-hmm. like separate, separate uh, stories at all. So mm-hmm. it's, I don't know how, yeah. So it's like a room, you it's have a, a cameras and then one by one, one by one, it's, in. everything just drips in. And that's because I'm so inexperienced at the moment. Mm-hmm. I could never write anything mm-hmm. like homegoing because it's just so well done. Mm -hmm. So that's where I would love to get to Mm -hmm. when I grow older Mm -hmm. and more experienced. But at the moment, I can only do the simple... Yeah, well, I mean, linear. Yeah, linear, exactly. And so, yeah. 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 But I completely hear you. That's exactly the same thing. If you think about it like vlogs, Mm. we do a lot of analysis on the vlogs mm. like even Casey Neistat well we watch oh, yeah. him and then I mean some people will be like hey just crazy and that's why it works I yeah. mean yeah that's mm. the part of the um <clears throat> of the success definitely yes <clears throat> pardon me but then if you start like deconstructing how he's putting his shots together and when he's choosing to be there mm. he's quite it's he's quite genius you know? but he's quite genius in terms of like he streams all the fats and he just like yeah keeps you focused mm. throughout the whole thing. And I think that's what maybe, maybe just keeps us there. I have he's, no idea. Yeah. I don't know. He's very, because what he does, I'm not that interested in. Mm-hmm. 
but he's still very engaging there. I still watch him. Because like, all of a sudden you're watching? like, yeah, five minutes in, you're like, I'm still watching this. Yeah, exactly. And I'm not even interested why exactly. you're with your kids in the pram, Absolutely. stuck in the middle of the traffic. Yeah. I'm like, but you, you, you're you keeping me there, so. <laughs> how, Casey? Yeah. How do you do that, isn't it? Yeah, that, yeah, that's a crazy one. But then I think the good analogy was uh, when um, you brought it with the script writing and obviously video. Mm. Like, for example, when I'm um, doing a video, again, I'm mm. quite inexperienced, so my project will be all very linear. Yeah. You know, so yeah. it'll be like day started how the day ends yes you know it won't be just like intricacies in the middle no, or, I'm not, no, or i'm not gonna start not from yet. like the let's the say end and then cul- coming yeah, yeah or the know, culmination the moments yeah. and then i'm gonna go and slowly build into this i mean that's their idea that's yes. what i would like to be one day absolutely but at the moment it's all very much we came in yeah. we did this and that's how it ends perfect <laughs> and then that's where yeah exactly that's where you start and then you can learn from other people you know but then again i'm thinking maybe in simplicity mm. there is there, a yeah. way there is a charm in simplicity because mm. um i watch a lot of different youtubers yeah. everyone who's very minimalistic mm. to the point where like you know transition on top of transition on mm-hmm. top of and you're like wow that was a lot of stuff yeah but then i'm trying to almost self-discover myself as a videographer yeah. through all of that work there seeing yeah. okay i kind of like this because it was quite you know um on one subject only we only did one thing and it actually kept my interest there instead of bombarding me with all of different transitions and all of different beautiful shots. But yeah. if the shots are not really adding anything to the story, then I'm not quite keen on that neither. Mm. So I think through watching a lot of different things, you kind of start pinpointing what do you actually like yourself? Mm. And as a videographer, where would you like to go? So at least that's where I've been lately with my you know, <laughs> soul discovery of videography <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> so yeah like to um but then how much do you write actually I is write writing something that you love yes so most i do a lot of poetry but it's like if i see something it will come to me in my head and i'll have to write it down in my in my my phone mm-hmm. so i have everywhere i have books my computer my ipad my phone all these just lines these one liners which then i take the time to develop later mm-hmm. on or sometimes i just write a full full thing you know um so I write every day because things come to you every day um do I you mean, feel like you need to have a need to get them out I of need, your head I always like, I can't sleep you? yeah yeah because yeah. wow. I've been sleeping no I won't be sleeping but I'll be thinking and something comes up and I know if I don't get up and write it down I'm just gonna be staring at the roof until I do so yeah every day I do I do write um do you make it as a habit like you have to no, or is it just it's really not, is just it really coming is out of coming, Yeah, it's not a conscious habit. No, wow. but I would like to get into a, a habit of writing quite a lot. Mm-hmm. So at the moment, I only write a few bits and pieces, mm-hmm. and then when I have the time, or when I want to have the time, mm-hmm. I go and really dive in and spend hours and hours just writing. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, no, it's not a habit. It's a it's a need. I think. It's interesting. Yeah. I was never a writer. And honestly, yeah. every single time I have a person sitting opposite me saying like, yeah, I just write. I'm like, how? I just, how does it happen? <laughs> I don't <laughs> know. It's fascinating. Like, I just don't understand. I cannot put three things together. Like, for me, caption writing on Instagram is like a torture sometimes. You yeah. know, I, I can relate. There are some days when you overcome something and mm. you really want to put that emotion into yeah. the caption. Yeah. Boom. Done. But then that happens. Yeah. But then. Almost but never. <laughs> that's like you, though. You love going out and taking photos, right? Yeah. I mean, I love taking photos, but... I, the writing that is would the have, way to get out. Yeah, that would have to I mean, be an effort for me to get out of bed and take photos. Oh, no, absolutely, yeah. Because we went through pictures, then it was blog. Exactly. The blogging didn't happen. Yeah. And for me, eventually, the taking picture part was mm. something that I could express myself with. Yes. And yeah. I think that's where, yeah, as you said, yeah. when I feel down or I want to distress or want to be present in a moment yeah. I go out with my camera because Absolutely. that is actually the only time when I'm not checking my phone I'm not mm-hmm. checking my watch mm-hmm. I'm actually just there, time, just there looking at the streets and taking pictures and I think it's it's been really like really good to my soul as well yeah surprisingly yeah. it is mm. yeah wow is. <laughs> but do you then go and re read what you have written or is it mostly just to get it out of your just system just to get it out but I do need to because I need to, to make something of mm-hmm. some of the things that I've written mm-hmm. but no I tend not to because they're quite you know <laughs> they're like, it's oh. the first draft it's almost like somebody blurbed something yes, out of it yes literally it? yeah and oh. a lot of the um, if I'm writing as well I tend to my brain is too fast for my hands so it's 
I go there and I have to decipher what I've just written. Mm-hmm. And I have no idea what I've just written because it's just a whole scribble of lines. I, I do, I do figure it out. But again, it's I don't often go and reread it. Do unless. you give it to read somebody else? No. No. I'm that person. <laughs> I'm like, you can't. <laughs> and everyone's like, no, but you need to. Run. That's what I'm also learning. I'm also learning to let people in mm-hmm. on it. Um, because again, writing is very raw. It's from your, it's, it's you. Yeah. And so it's what Billy Collins, he said, it's a diary. It's just a diary without a key. Yeah. And um, so I don't want people reading my diary, but I, I will eventually let people read my diary. Does your mom sometimes read something? Like let's say if you're writing a script, obviously you need to send it then to... I send it to my dad or my brother. Oh. My mom is, uh, she's creative, but she's not into like the film and uh, Mm. where's my dad he has a business and things but he's actually first and foremost a painter so yeah so I send it to my dad and he's like my biggest hype man and my brother who I work he he comes up with the stories actually a lot of the the things that I write and uh, we flesh it out idea generator yes he is no but really he comes up with the most amazing original ideas and then he just gives it to me to develop Mm -hmm. and make sense of and then I write and he interjects his opinions, you know, and I send, give it to him to read, yes or no, mm-hmm. maybe go this way. It's kind of, yeah. I think it's very important, isn't it? Absolutely. Was it always like a very symbiotic or did you guys have to find a way how to talk to each other to get that communication channels? Oh, it came easy. Yeah. No, 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 no. We think the same. We're like the same person. Wow. Yeah, yeah. No. Okay. Yeah. I think it's extremely important because we work, obviously I work with Jan. Yeah. And a lot of people are like now looking like years back now looking at us and they're like, oh my God, guys, how do you understand each other from like this? And I'm like, it's been years since we like Hell established time. our channels. Yeah. And there are certain points where I'm like, I'm not even getting upset anymore. There are certain ways that he understands that I will be doing that. Yeah. He can predict my next step according to the mood I am now. Really? It's... <clears throat> That's nice oh, though. Uh, it just... is, because when you're working together, you really do not have the luxury of time to no. go and sit and explain bit by bit by no. bit. No, 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 And no, of no, course, no. what's going to happen, especially when you're pressured for time, there will be a lot of snapping. There mm. will be a lot of like, wow, what's going on? But then this is just like at the beginning, we were all very like, you know, gentle. We're like, oh my God, yeah. you can't speak to each other like this. No. But now we're like, get it all out. Because mm. I know once you get it all out, we can actually go and start working on the work. Yes, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So I think um, glad that we'd never pay attention to this till people are going to like, till people point at us. Till people point at us. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. So then we're like, oh, yeah, that's actually true. Because we like, you know, it's a day to day thing for us. Yeah. And I think having that partner who you can bounce ideas off, yeah. even if the second partner is like just sitting there, just listening. Just listening as well. And kind so, of going, so helpful. Exactly. Because you're kind of deciphering it through your mind. Even though you're telling them, mm. you're kind of figuring it out as you go as well. It's Absolutely. Just, yeah. And I think sometimes saying it out loud actually makes mm. it more real. Absolutely. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. And then you kind of go like, okay, so that was in my head. Now I spoke it out loud. People actually didn't freak out. People <laughs> didn't leave the room and slamming the door saying this is the weirdest shit ever. ever. Yeah. Yeah. So you're like, okay, I have a chance. Exactly. When people actually go, oh, okay. You're like, okay, okay. Yeah, really? You really? Do, you're okay with that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Poker face, poker face. Yeah, yeah, I'm on it. Yeah, yeah, I totally see that's going to be all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, oh my no. God, this is so funny. Um, But then do you, is there a, no, I have, I have quite a few questions here. Okay. But I, I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, Sorry. I'm thinking, no, 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 you're okay. Um, I don't understand. I don't even know what to say. <laughs> I'm just like so fascinated by people who can write and I just like can sit here and like listen to you talk for ages. For ages. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's like, try it's, to pick into your brain and be like, why can I not have that in I my have, head? Yeah. No. Did you always write? Like when was the, when did you start writing? Okay. So I remember actually we had to write poems for school. So year seven, year eight. Mm. And I loved it. Oh, Absolutely wow. loved it. Mm. Um, and I was so, be so excited to write it. And then I wrote a poem for my mom for her birthday and I changed schools because I wanted to go to a more creative school. The school mm-hmm. I went to was quite sporty. And I did English because mm-hmm. they said, oh, we'd be doing creative writing, et cetera, et cetera, drama. So I took English all the way up to year 13 because mm-hmm. every year I was promised we we're going to do creative writing. <laughs> did we do creative writing? <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> the most creative writing we did was having to write a report about um, – we could make up a report about a – like a outlaw mm. 
I okay. didn't want to do that. No. No. That's not interesting. And that all. was, that's why I continued doing English until year 13. But I was totally like. But do you guys not? Because we were pushed to write essays and I hated them. Oh, we did essays, but that's not. Not the same. That's not the same. No, no, no. Oh. For me, I, I thought creative writing would be doing poems and maybe scripts or plays, you know. And I was, I was thoroughly disappointed and so I thought maybe writing's not for me so I stopped writing Mm -hmm. I remember doing drama actually though we got to uh, write fairy tales Mm -hmm. and that was so cool so we wrote a fairy tale I can't remember what it's called but it was like a gangster fairy tale (laughs) I think I think it was called in the woods or something I don't know what it was called in the woods or something and it was like a gangster version of some man of fairy tale yeah Yeah. (laughs) and that was super exciting but I just lost interest no I thought I lost interest in writing Mm. because I just didn't do any creative writing Mm. so I got more into the film part being in front of the camera Mm -hmm. um and then it wasn't until last year that I'd be looking at the script and I'd be like I have to say this you know I would want to alter alter everything and then I was like maybe I should just write my own thing Mm -hmm. started writing loved it and that's what I was like okay I'm a writer. I'm still a writer, you know? Okay. But yeah. And that's clearly still a passion. It's clearly still a passion. I'll yeah. forever do it. But yeah. How was the feeling when you realized that? Oh, I was like, oh yeah. I mean, I guess, <laughs> I guess I've always liked it. I just didn't realize that, you know? Mm. Yeah. I don't know. It was, just, it was nice. It was nice to be able to be like, okay, cool. I can make this like a career. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. No, I mean, I think it's extremely important because... Did you always, well, I mean, you always had like a passion for writing, which yeah. is exciting. When yeah. I was growing up, I was a very sporty girl. Yes. I was actually used to play football. I used to dance a lot. I used to like, you know, hip hop and jazz. Like really? Very, yeah. And I, I didn't know this about you. Yeah. What? Yeah, all of this. And then when we played football as well with the girls, especially. Yeah. In Estonia, girls football is all right. I mean, comparison to English is non-existent, okay. right? But it's still pretty okay. Mm-hmm. And um, when you are like 16, 17 years old, mm. we have like 10 teams, I think, around ye- um, around Estonia, yeah. which you then have to go and compete in a season. And obviously then you have a season finale mm. and then blah, blah, blah. So um, you have your winners. And we were actually winners of, you know, the team 16. It's called literally in Estonia, it's called team 16, which means 16 year old girls. Yeah won the championship and it's called team 16 so we won a championship of 16 of a group 16 year olds and the next year 17 year olds and then after that I almost broke my foot (laughs) and my mom was like you're not doing that anymore (laughs) I remember we had a graduation party and my dress was like up to my knees yeah but it wasn't long enough and my knees were literally had a game just the day before my both knees were blooded like literally covered in blood so I had big two white plasters (laughs) with antiseptic on them and the doctor said you can't take them out because obviously it's an open wound yeah and I literally had to like pull my dress as low as I possibly could to cover those massive plasters underneath it and mom was like really (laughs) is that really what you want to do because you know it does get quite wild Uh, yeah playing football with the gals were you yeah yeah nails involved yeah yeah, I was gonna say hair and nails Quite, like, yeah yeah it's it's yeah. like i was quite shocked yeah i was like well it's not really it's not a contact sport but is it not really uh, no i mean but it was it's just still... it's very competitive it's yeah. extremely competitive and i mean like when the guys are playing the football it's all very like logical it goes from one place to another player to Absolutely. another player with the girls it's like yeah. screams and shouts and then eventually I was just like no I think maybe, maybe it's not no. quite my thing really <laughs> yeah I think yeah a couple of times I had to come up to to school in the crutches because I Are just like serious? yeah pulled my string here or um, pulled something yeah. there my grandma was like I had enough of this like stop yeah. it especially like it was in the winter time like I had to go to school and it's all like road is very icy yeah. it's not really far away it's like a 10 minute walk but then the crutches is like a half an hour oh, yeah and then the whole school was like oh, what's going on la, la, la. <laughs> and then because the games were taking place in the different cities so i had to skip some of the days at school to get to those places like i mean we had a couch like yeah yeah, you know we had like people coming in gathering us taking us to the places Mm. it was all very organized really well but i was like you are graduating school like i think there are better things to concentrate on yeah okay (laughs) 
right. But I think it's fine. Every now and again, still, like when I see girls playing football in Estonia, when I visit every now and again, I'm like, oh yeah, that's quite cool actually. <laughs> yeah. But I, I don't like, you know, no. like, yeah, it was the was... E- era when the like, Bended Like Back Home movies came out. Yeah. And oh, then everyone yes. was like, of course, let's rewatch I it. Be, yeah. Oh, totally. You yeah, know, yeah. I will come after the session. Everyone is smelly. <laughs> Everything stinks. You know, the boots are like, you have to put them in a, in a balcony. Otherwise, just yeah. your mom is going to be like, I'm not going to even I'm enter your room. Yes. It's horrible. Like, yeah, my mom was like, really? Like, really? Is that what you want to do? But then I was still a really good fun. It was a very kind of team spirit mm. building mm. exercise. You have to really know each other to understand mm. how to pass the ball and how to play that game. So, you know, I mm. was kind of fast when I started to realize the kind of human, not psychology, but understanding how how, it, how important it can be oh, and it needs oh, to be, in a way. Yeah. A little bit. Absolutely. Yeah. Because yeah, with yeah. dancing, it's, it's quite solo. You know, you come to classes, you dance. Yeah. Especially in the big cities, mm. like they, you will be taking classes and then if you're kind of good enough and if the teacher kind of spots you, then eventually they're going to form a As group. A group, yeah. And then when, okay, now you start to, you know, dance with each other. Absolutely, yeah. And that kind of thing. But then usually that takes time. Did you do that? Yeah. Oh for a God. while, for a really long time. Yeah. I did ballet for six years. I Are know. you serious? Yeah, I did ballet for six years. My mom was like, oh. when I was four years old, she was like, okay, darling, so we're going to keep you busy. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, okay. Well, I mean, as you know, four years old, you're like, yeah, that okay, it's fine. Crazy. So we had next to our, um, um, like, I'm the, the city, and mm-hmm. then we lived just slightly outside of the city, so yeah. kind of a smallish village. And then back yeah. in the city, we had this house, which called basically like a creative studies house. So basically you have everything under one roof. So you mm. have dancing classes, you have painting, you mm-hmm. have English classes, you have, I don't remember what else, they had acting and drama. So... For some bizarre reason, drama and acting was never on a on a on table. a table. Okay. Yeah. So Have my you mom was considered like, considered it ever? Or? No, I don't know why. But really? then we're kind of even yeah. Okay. Um, my mom was like, I used to dance, so you're gonna go to the dancing school. Fantastic, quite fun. So they put me there. So basically, I did this. I did English and I did painting, and that was basically That's like nice. from from. I mean, maybe, okay, maybe I'm over-exaggerating, maybe not when I was four. I think it was five and a half. So just the year before I went to school. So they start like prepping you. And then for three years in a row, that would be like, I'll go to school. And after school, your school finishes at three o'clock. And then you go to that house and then you have an an hour of dancing, an hour of painting, and an hour of of English. Three hours after school. After school, (gasps) yeah. So my mom would then finish work at six o'clock. She will come and pick me up and we'll go home. So they were like, we're keeping you busy. (laughs) Well, they kept you busy. (laughs) Wow, three hours after school. Three hours after school. So like sometimes the, the, you know, the, they will change. I think the painting will be sculpturing and like kind of that kind of stuff. So Do do you still paint? No. Why not? I don't know. <laughs> like, um, there are certain things that I really like. And I mean, yeah. when I'm stressed out or I just like really bored out of my mind, I take yeah. a paper and I just and kind of draw some stuff. And there are certain things that I always draw because mm. I know I can. <laughs> um, but more often than not, no, I mean, honestly, it was really bad. It came to me how bad I am in, in the game, you know, Pictionary. Oh, yes. I've never played it, but yeah. It's a real... I mean, if you, if you really don't want to speak to your family ever again, play <laughs> Pictionary. Because then yeah. everyone is going to be like, do you think this no. is what it is? <laughs> no, it's not. It's a really fun game though. Yeah. And we used to play that with our um, uh, friends. So it's like a really good kind of Christmas game. Mm. Um, you know, you gather together 12 of you and you just try to pay, you know, paint stuff. Yeah. And for some bizarre reason, um, yeah, I don't know. It wasn't just, a stress, but the fact that like, so everyone is shouting because they're yeah. trying to guess what they're you're trying- yeah, yeah, and you're like, yeah, and yeah. you know, more often than not, the the kind of quest is gonna be like, I don't know, oasis. It's not like a palm tree with something. It's just like how you're gonna draw oasis under fifteen seconds, that and is it's just like a very good point. Yeah, or like <laughs> I don't know, missing boots, and you're like, how I'm gonna draw that? Like it's just like, yeah, you know, your logic goes against your creativity. You're like, logically, you should be saying this or yeah. writing this, yeah, 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 or painting this but your creativity goes like this doesn't make doesn't any make sense. sense like you are insulting me by doing <laughs> yeah. this so you kind of see like your two brains going like, and, like, gliding, and like, it's just like and your hand is just going <laughs> and you're like okay just whatever you know and one of them made said to me polina start taking you know painting classes <laughs> and i was like oh my god this hey, is so <laughs> bad this is so bad i literally generally now when friends are like yeah we're gonna bring a picture over here i'm like i'm not coming <laughs> No, I still do, but it's just not a good thing. Oh. So yeah, but I think out of everything that we've done on that creative house, mm. I think dancing was something that kind of spoke to me. Mm. And I was very 
um, in a way puzzled why mm. my mom did not continue this career path because she was also oh, a dancer for right. a really long time. So it's yeah. almost like, you know, you go to, you know, we, we studied for 12 years in Estonia. Mm -hmm. So when you go to your first class and then throughout those 12 years, the it's almost like a normal that you will have a hobby. You're going to be a swimmer. So for example, my brother was straight away put into the Pol uh, water polo water polo and be like, you swim, mate. <laughs> that game just seems so crazy. To me. <laughs> Honestly. Yeah, I know. I don't understand how to do that, no. but then whatever, you know, and he liked it and all of the things like, I mean, it's almost like you're five years old. You've been given options. Mm -hmm. They take you to the different classes and then whatever you pick, this is kind of, you're going to continue your with, of, in a way. Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, you can try maybe years later, say I'm not longer interested in that, Yeah, but you're going to have your whole family committee <laughs> saying like, why? Why? You've been <laughs> you're doing so this. Good at it. You're so good at this. <laughs> why? <laughs> why sudden change and of course sudden change happens just before you become a teenager Absolutely. trying to explain that to the parents mm -hmm. oh, that's another ball game so anyways yeah so out of everything dancing was something that i really really liked and i think when we moved from a small town to Ooh. then capital because i'm not originally from Tallinn, we moved there <clears throat> um dancing schools were extremely ex expensive, expensive yeah. really expensive yeah. and my mom was like et cetera, et cetera. yeah and my mom was like darling i don't think we can afford it really yeah. so i started then working uh -huh. and then trying to then do dance classes and of course oh really at yeah. what age were we working? i think i'm 16 so okay. basically i got a um i've got a um a gig at Radisson, so like in the mornings, you know, the kind of serving buffets, so like oh, something okay. that you, yeah, you yeah. can't handle alcohol or anything yes, like that, yeah, you can't yeah. handle it in cash. So like, you know, like in the mornings, make sure the buffet is ready. It's like yeah. a big hotel. Um, nice. The hours were like from five o'clock in the morning to like one o'clock, but I was like, I'm 16 years old. Of course I can do it. Like Five in the morning? Because it's, you know, you're preparing for the breakfast. So oh, okay, like six o'clock yeah, then, okay, yeah, yeah. And then yeah. buffet will mm. usually what finishes at 11. Yeah. And then by the time you kind of cleaned up everything, clean up, have a lunch and then you're off to go. And then. How did you fit that with school? Are you not tired? I only worked over the weekends. Okay. Only okay. over the weekends. But then obviously I quickly realized if I want to study for five days because yeah. obviously that's when the school takes time yeah, yeah. then I want to take free classes because it was like three amazing teachers I really wanted to like go to the classes oh. too because we had jazz we had lyrical jazz and hip-hop and I was like oh my god I wanted them all <clears throat> so you worked quite hard to do what you wanted to yeah, do from but a... uh, I couldn't keep that for a long time yeah like it's impossible because then obviously like going at school five Absolutely. days then two days yeah, yeah. working like mm -hmm. I mean no matter how young you are at some point you're gonna break yeah so eventually oh, yeah. I kind of kept going I think like first three months I was like yeah I can do it but eventually I was like so okay so there's a dance class at six o'clock in the evening and I'm just knackered like shattered beyond belief and I was like no I'm not gonna make it so mm -hmm. eventually the whole point of me making money I'm not making to the dance classes just kind of it just was pointless yeah. and hence why the football came in because football was just so much cheaper <laughs> Really? Yeah. Why did you get into the football? Because football was just so much cheaper. It really was. It was really? like pennies in comparison to... Yeah. They really wanted to... Like, I think we had a boom in Estonia at that point. Like, mm. girls should be playing football. So eventually, if you join the club, yeah. there are certain clubs that were, you know, very popular. Yeah. And then, yeah. like, men men's league mm -hmm. or whatever. And then they will be creating a women's league next to them. And then as soon as you join them, they almost give you, like, a bag full of, of uniform. the stuff you need. Exactly. And that's it. And the that's whole it. Year. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you literally pay your monthly fee. Mm. and that's it you know but that's they, yeah that yeah. just makes sense but they are like they're proper sporty people they know what they're doing they've been like coaching people for so many years yeah. so yeah you came in and straight away boom dig in you know like you go to gym three times a week yeah. you have to go and run like 12 kilometers around the forest no matter if it's like plus five or mm -hmm. minus 20 mm -hmm. you know like mm -hmm. our our coach used to say Oh, uh, there is not a bad weather. It's a bad um, yeah, uniform. It. Oh, no. uniform. Yeah. Oh. And I was like, well, darling, it's minus 20 outside. He's like, no, no, no. You just, you know, take a pace. You know, it'll be fine. I was like, <laughs> yeah, literally. But then, no, you run. Yeah. You go home. You get sick. Till next week. Till exactly. you go and run again. You keep doing it, you know? <laughs> yeah. My mom was like, I don't understand why you're doing it. But then, yeah, that was kind of the whole roller coaster. So how did she feel when you got into photography? What did she say? What? like um yeah my mom random? is quite traditional okay like yeah. a whole family is quite traditional yeah. but they're all very um unvocal in your face so they will be like oh we understand but then there will be a lot of 
you know, behind your back in a way, uh, okay. you know, thinking, yeah. okay, my grandma would literally sit down with my mom and be like, okay, what's your daughter is up to? Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, yeah. um, but yeah. they, they kind of got it from the very beginning. There was a little bit of a rebel. Yeah. <laughs> I was always like, oh, you want me to do that? No, but I'm, I'm going to go do, do some of this. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you don't want me to dance. You want me to do. And I don't know. Every single time my grandma would be like, it doesn't make any sense. And mm. I will go and prove her it does make sense. But it's, that's, you see? Yeah. Yeah. And you have, you know, it yeah. makes sense for um, you. And I think the biggest kind of shock for them was I'm coming from a family of engineers. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. My grandma, my dad, my granddad, everyone is engineer. Everyone has to do with, um, they all finished engineering schools Mm. and universities. And it was all about like mechanical engineering kind Mm. of backgrounds. And then I, then what we do in Estonia, you study for nine years. So that's your kind of primary school, I guess. Primary two. And then college yeah yeah but in the last three years it's kind of like a preparation for university so after nine years you can go to college Mm -hmm. but then if you want to get to university you need to do those extra three years so we call them high school okay in a way so and then in in that three years basically you need to decide whether you go you have three options you have humanitarian which Mm -hmm. is all about creative studies so it's like writing a lot of reading it's all about history Mm -hmm. and um writing really so i had a really good classmate till Mm -hmm. the year nine who was like i'm going there and i was like Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Then you have economics. So yes. like you study a lot of different languages yeah. and the languages you study, you also study economics in that language as well. Okay. So there will be German economics, there will mm-hmm. be English economics, and there will be like Finnish or Russian economics, whatever they decide to. And then the last one would be all about math. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. <laughs> math, physics, <laughs> chemistry. And I was like, I'm going to go there. Oh, really? Yes. <laughs> Because I was just like, I love the math teacher. I really like her. And <laughs> okay. we've been given like literally six six hours of math in a week, Ooh. which is quite a lot in comparison to the, the rest of the kind of the streams of whatever you call mm-hmm. them. So I was like, I'm going to go into that class. And um, my mom was like, yeah, exactly. Because if you want to go to university, if you want to do, you know, something with engineering, mm. That's, then you'd have to take that yeah, path, yeah exactly so basically this is kind of the group of people who then is you know anyone to do with lawyers yeah. doctors anything that's where you go and Ooh. i was like all right i'm gonna go there then but then obviously at the end of the 12th year i was like i don't want to study math anymore i've been studying so much of it are you good at maths mm, used to yeah. okay yeah i mean but i guess it's still there if you kind of jo- jo- i think me. I think a lot of people oh. are like writing keeps my mind sane yeah dancing keeps my mind sane math kept my mind sane at that point because obviously you've been given a um i don't even know what you say but they will be given exercise and then you have to literally write it all down and get to the conclusion what's x equals to the worst part you know what x equals to but you have to write this essay yeah yeah i knew how to do the the figure out x but i did not know how to do the essay oh that is the worst part oh i love that yeah Yeah, it's it's, it's a different one no 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 but then obviously i said to my mum. I'm not going to any of the university, anything to do with math. So I literally came to UK to yeah, study yeah. adventure tourism management. <laughs> <laughs> adventure tourism management. I couldn't explain that to my mum. I just said, <laughs> yeah. hey mum, I've got a spot in UK. Yeah. I'm going there. And she's like, cool. What is, is that something? What is that? What adventure tourism management. So basically anything to do with outdoors. So you're okay. kind of, they're preparing you in a both scenarios so you can be outdoor instructor as well mm-hmm. as running your business as an adventure um company so for example okay. i could have moved to lake district and opened my own kind of outdoor, outdoor activity okay, yeah, company okay. so mm-hmm. anything to do with mountaineering um orientation okay zip lining anything to do with this i we could do that and i mean it was just a best three years of my life it was just so much fun university was funding us to the right to the left every single like semester mm-hmm. you would go to alps and study to be a <laughs> oh. <laughs> study so to be a, a snowboard instructor oh wow that really yeah helped. i know That's and then every like three months they would take it to lake district and they'll be like okay so we're gonna spend four days in um wet mountains you wow. know trying to orient um try to learn some skills like outdoor yeah, skills outdoor, yeah, yeah and it was amazing like That's, as that my, was amazing that was amazing sounds like pe kind of yeah we know, did a little PE. bit of pe as well so that was yeah. quite like i mean not even a little bit quite a lot to yeah, be honest yeah. so and eventually i think without realizing it it was actually quite a good shout but then obviously yeah, yeah. graduating from this you kind of go Okay, what? What now? do I do now? I don't yeah, want to be instructor. Yeah. I don't want to be a water sport instructor. I don't really see myself as being this. Did you go into it thinking that you were going to be an instructor? 
I went to uh, it because I just wanted to get out of house. Okay. Okay. Like that's what it was. <laughs> that makes sense. It's like, why are you yeah. making going to I'm like, I cannot live under the same roof no, with my no, mom. No. Like we just really did not get along. You moved countries. And I had to did move you? countries. Yeah. yeah. From Estonia yeah. I went to like to that's... to to England. I mean other options were Canada at some point, but Canada was just so much more expensive. And I was like flying yeah. from Canada to Estonia is just it's not happen. No. Yeah. So I was like, okay, UK it is then. <laughs> yeah. And funnily enough, I don't think they are running this um program anymore they probably have put it together with some sort of another business management okay. to make it a little bit more i guess <laughs> academical <laughs> but the best part was like you know the bachelor's <laughs> degree i had to write evaluation on myself okay. how did i went from a to b and that was probably the the most bizarre piece of work i have ever had to do oh, so, and you get graded on that so yeah. about your development yeah, so that was my bachelor degree kind of uh, so thesis. Strange. Yeah, when people are like literally taking something extremely academical, this is very psychological. Yeah, like no, it was it very much like, how did you the go book. from A to B? What did you learn? And why do you think those skills um, are going to help you mm. in your you know day to day life going forward? So that was how do you get graded on something so psychological? How do you get graded on that? I think it was just um, the amount of academia you were using in okay. this piece of work. Oh, okay, yeah. Fair and enough. that's kind of yeah. it. If you could explain, so let's say like there was a coloration between my behavior yeah. and then I could explain, like, and then I can prove that there is another, you know, okay. smart person out yeah. there, said it out loud and it was, you know, published, then yeah, clearly I have some sort of proof. Yeah, yeah, I mean, but that was a, I loved it, but I think that was the first time when I actually sat down and looked into the whole thing and thinking, okay, what the hell did you just do now? Because, you yeah. know, three years of fun is lovely. Um, but now it's, uh, wait, wait. I can't say now it's crunch time, but, you know, it's time to really yeah. think about what. Eventually, I wish... I wish in a way that Instagram with the whole traveling boom happened then because then it would kind of make sense. Yeah. Um, but then we were just a bit too young too for the late. whole thing. Yeah. And it just yeah. didn't make any sense then. And a lot of people who actually started with me, we had an amazing group because obviously 20 of us spent so much time together. Mm. We probably were the most closest team mm. in in that university in general because yeah. it's just you spend it's so much time together, together doing so many different things building. you know yeah literally yeah. it's building so you know a lot i remember like we had to do uh rock climbing and mm. the guys were helping us out and there were the guys who were really good they were like you know they will go on a rock that mm. literally didn't have anything, anything to reach on like. <laughs> and they're just like Bloom. Yeah. like well how do you do that <laughs> no we yeah. used to have girls saying like my bum is too weak and my hands are too heavy like yeah. like all that way around my, my hands are too weak and my bum is too heavy, too heavy. i can't do that like you know what i mean yeah that was there was a little bit of this but it was fun um i think when i kind of got a little bit an idea of the photography was <coughs> sorry um no no you're right um <coughs> it was um our final project actually was so university said you have a grant per each person yeah um, pounds. That's nice. They That's give it nice. to you. No, oh. you have to. You have to do a project, and a project was you have to travel to a certain destination. Okay. You have to have a name mm-hmm. and what you're trying to achieve. So we yes. had, I think, six different teams. Our first, like, I had six girls in our group, mm-hmm. and we were probably the most mixed in terms of like we had all the nationalities. We had Polish, Estonian, English, French everything every spectrum there was yeah, there yeah. so i mean handling that team of girls was on its own quite a headache mm. but it was a fun headache and then at the first we sat down and we're like what can we do like i mean it's quite a lot of money yeah. if you think about it you just need to add a little bit more and you can do whatever just you want yeah. so at the beginning we really wanted to go to um peru where and travel peru oh peru. Yeah. yeah and travel oh, all the way from top to the to the bottom yeah. because it's just right. such a different and interesting um place to be but mm. then eventually flying to south america is so expensive and we were like all our money yeah. literally is going to go to the flight so then everything else we need to pay from our own pockets and yeah. i mean i'm 21 did you go no okay but we went to vietnam so our um, <gasps> yeah no Amazing. vietnam was cheaper and we spent literally three and a half weeks traveling from the top to the bottom but yeah. our aim was to produce photographic exhibition mm-hmm. on the american vietnamese war of the sites that have not been commodified yet. Okay. Does that make sense? Commodified yet means that basically yeah. they haven't been created into some sort of, yeah. you know, um, the, history like, museum or yeah. whatever. Yeah, yeah. They literally need to be standing there. Nobody has touched them yet. Yeah. Little did we know upon arrival that obviously Vietnamese people very quickly, as soon as the war was over, yeah. demolished everything because why would they have something there standing and reminding them of those of horrible the old, times? Yeah, and we're like, so damn. <laughs> 
<laughs> with nothing there. Uh, oh. But we we'll still went to the places, certain places. We had to like uh, bargain our way to the certain caves to, in okay. hopes that there will be something there. But obviously, it's still a uni project, so you need to stick to the plan. Absolutely. And the plan was like that thick. <laughs> what are we going to do? Where are we going to be? You know, we had to draw up the map. There yeah. had to be a risk assessment, obviously. There had to be a financial uh, risk assessment mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. Everything had to be put in together. So almost like look at it as if if you were to come to me and say, hey, Pauline, I want to do an expedition expedition in mm-hmm. Antarctica. Mm-hmm. And I'll be like, okay, what's your budget? And I will be creating a thing for you. So that's what we had to do for our professors and then for university just to, you know, cover the back of anything that's going to go wrong. Yeah. So, and then basically we created a lot of pictures and then the pictures were then blown out into our exhibition center in university back in Birmingham. So that was like the first time when I was like, oh my God, that is actually so cool. Yeah. Because I think even our teachers were like, this is probably the most exciting project because we had some guys who were like just doing some crazy stuff in India, like budget jumping and all that kind of Uh, stuff. But then, yes, it's adventurous, but there's no... There is no kind of other agenda behind it. There was another team who did, I think, tracking to the base camp of Everest, but then... Yeah, okay. it's 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 difficult, but then what else? Yeah, like we have what physical is... proof of us traveling from top to the north well, yeah. and actually doing all of this as well. And I think it was really good. We had people who were like really good at financial team and she was like, we spent so much money here. We can't do anything else. I was like, okay, cool. So we're not going to spend any more time. Mm-hmm. Then another one who was constantly keeping us on track. So you all had your own best yeah. to control. Yeah, kind of like. So that was quite show. exciting. I think after that, walking out of it, I was like, there is something about photography that I really like. Yeah. I was still very scared. Like if That's somebody would cool, give me a camera, I'll be like, I have no idea. The exposure doesn't make any sense. Yeah. But nothing yeah, made yeah. any sense whatsoever. Till, till we just... You, so you had to just do it and yeah. then kind of... Yeah. Because yeah, I was put in a situation where I was a manager at a restaurant, okay. pulling out 55, 60 hours a week. My restaurant was my home. Yeah. And I was like, Where's is that something I want to do that? when I'm 24? Not really. No, because... So, yeah. So then yeah, yeah. Jan came and he was like, get out. I'll risk you. <laughs> get out. We're going to do something completely different. Yeah. And I think uh, being out of the comfort zone is, oh, it's crazy, to. but yeah. you have to. But you it becomes to. your norm. It beca- yeah, it becomes your norm. You're like, oh, this is going to make me ang- go to do it. You know, it becomes, yeah, I agree. It yeah. becomes your norm and you get used, you get used to it, but I feel like you get used to feeling like it's okay after like I'm always yeah. like and then once it's done I'm like oh, it's always the same feeling you know it wasn't that bad you know you're fine blah blah yeah yeah that's I, I agree with you yeah completely agree with you but then coming back to you and the traveling what sort of traveling have you done recently here because you've traveled a lot around <laughs> yeah. Europe was I've it just tra- because you knew you're going to go back to New Zealand and you want to try to get as much as you can get as much yeah so it was that and also I had you go through every creative person goes through a block um, but I think it was because I was working so much mm. and I thought I just needed to get away and do some self-reflecting, read the things I want to read, write the things I want to write, talk to the people I want to talk to, which was no one at the time. So it was, it was really nice. You get to go away. You don't have to talk to people, you know, but you also get to meet people that have a completely different way of life. Mm. Um, so that was really nice. I traveled because, of course, I'm from New Zealand. So coming back is going to be like a, a big thing yeah. um so I traveled I went to where did I go I went to Brussels because mm-hmm. my dad wanted to go which was interesting um I don't think it's as it's, probably exciting as everyone thinks it is absolutely it's not. like absolutely nothing absolutely not yeah um yeah but very much like yes it's the capital of Europe but that's yes, about it it's that's, just no there's nothing yeah really when people are like when I have friends from UK, uh, not from UK, from not from Europe. They're like, oh, where should I go? I mean, the first thing I usually say to them, just don't bother going to Brussels. <laughs> I'm sorry to anyone no. who's listening that. You can just, go one day. One day's fine. Yeah. But don't go. Through. Day. Yes. Yeah. yeah. All right. Where else did you go, guys? Um, and then I went, that was just it with dad. And then I went to Mallorca. 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 It's mm. off Spain. Yeah. Yeah. Like a small island. It's yeah. a small island of Spain. It was great. Um, and then I went to, where did I go? I went to... Naples, mm. Amalfi Coast. How it was, was that? It was beautiful. Mm. I mean, I fell in love with Italy. I want to move to Venice. I went to Venice as well. Yeah, Italy is honestly the most beautiful place ever in Europe. 
I think, think it's so it. creative yes. in a way how it is and I think so inspiring. Too. Inspiring. You walk around everything and everything just oozes off yeah. of like yeah. that energy that you want to take on and be like, I need that energy now Absolutely. to survive. And I want to live in that energy. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that's the that's what I got when I went to Venice. I honestly I got off the train and said, This is gonna be my home. Oh honestly, and the art there is phenomenal. Mm. Everyone is so kind. Um it's yeah I really everything creative came out of me then Mm. I couldn't stop I honestly it was beautiful wow yeah and so and then I went to Florence which was also very beautiful that is the place we haven't been yet Ishika but don't go into like I went into the city like I would Mm -hmm. bus into the city but go a little bit in the countryside Mm -hmm. That is, oh my gosh. What did you say, like in vineyards? What did it have next to it? No, I stayed in an Airbnb, which Mm -hmm. was like a house, like a shared house kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But, oh, it wasn't a shared house. It was like my own little Airbnb, but there was other apartments next Mm -hmm. to it. Um, But yeah. Are they growing anything in those fields around? Yes, wine. Yes, wine. wine. I became a wine, red wine (laughs) snob. <laughs> now I taste my wine. Oh really? So yeah. it's not just like swirly, swirly. Actually, no, no, yeah. no. I don't do it. I don't do yeah. that. But I do like to taste it before I um, I buy you it. Go for the whole. I thing. go for the whole thing. Yeah. No. Mm-hmm. Um. So there are a lot of uh, vineyards. Um. But that's all I saw. Actually, I think that was only vineyards. Was it like eat, love, and pray? <laughs> Kind of. <laughs> Italian chapter. Yeah. There we go. I like to eat my pasta and I like to drink red wine. And I like to have... Yeah. 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 I mean, if that... I mean, at the beginning, being obviously from Europe, you go to Italy every now and again and you really exactly. do think... You guys are so lucky. I know. I find... I've met so many people who haven't travelled. Yeah. Who wouldn't even be out of England. Mm. I mean, yeah. English people are a bit yeah. like this. Yeah. But even Europeans, they just go back to their home. Yeah. And I'm like, no. You... Like, you they have all of these places just at your fingertips. Yeah. And we don't even realize it. We no. went to America and we were in New York and obviously, you know, in an airport you have like, oh, we'll travel to Croatia. Yeah. And that is, I yeah. will oh, travel to Italy. And that is advertised as if like something extraordinary, destination, yes. yeah, you know, like finale, you know, yeah. it's so grand. Yeah. And you never think of it that way. No. You're always like, well, it's just here. It's just that, yeah. It's just here. Yeah. Like, I mean, I'm saying like, I've been to Milan six times. Pfft. Can't be bothered exactly. To I mean, I want to go to Milan. You know, <laughs> got completely different. Yeah, yeah. But then there is something about Venice, and I think there's something oh. about Italy. When I was young, in general, I used to go and I used to be like, yeah, I'm not quite sure. Really? But now I'm like, okay, this is totally my vibe. Yes, honestly, it is. I I fully agree. Mm. I fully agree. Uh, you've been you went to Venice again. In your yeah, we years. went to Venice. I've been in general to Venice like three or four times <sighs> now. I know. <laughs> but then oh, Alice yeah. also obviously Milan to Venice I think three and a half hour train, train ride, ride yeah. Yeah. yeah so every yeah. time whatever come to her we would just take a couple of cheap bottles of wine and maybe some like sandwiches some, yeah, nice. and then we would go there in the evening and then come back and then no whole, you no, wouldn't no, and then the whole night we'll spend outside yeah chasing then the sunset yeah. sunrise sorry and then taking the train back at 10 o'clock in the morning. So that was like a whole nighter up. So you will then, because she speaks Italian, so then we would go to like yeah. small cafes, yeah. speak to the people. Mm. Uh, people, like, I mean, those are the places where usually tourists never go. Because obviously tourists usually arrive at 10 o'clock in the morning, mm. especially the, the, no on the ships. No one gets up. Yeah. No one gets up before 10. No. I swear. No, no. Which is good. I, I think it's good too. It's actually. good. Because this time we were there around 7 o'clock in the morning trying to take some sunrise pictures. Yeah. I mean, San Marco uh, Plaza full. Mm. Mm-hmm. Already full. Yeah. And I was like, oh God. <laughs> but that was also Saturday morning. I mean, Friday morning was not that busy. So no. I guess over the weekends it gets filled. Filled very fast. Very fast. Yeah. yeah. Um, but then we would just chatted with all those like local people mm-hmm. and then we would just like try not to freeze ourselves because that would usually like be May and May is still quite cold. Plus Venice yeah. is very close to the water. The water it, yeah. yeah, you will be sitting there shivering. So the red wine was there for a reason, not to kind of keep <laughs> to yourself, keep you warm. to keep you warm. Literally, I was like, this is my <laughs> thermal water. I'm not going to let it go. And then obviously then you, obviously we were students. So yeah. you wait for the McDonald's to open and have that like really cheap, like really cheap yeah, yeah. burger. Because it's at that so point. It's so expensive in Venice. Do you not? Really it is. It's yeah. Amazing. But then coffee and a pastry, uber cheap. Which I really like. Like, I mean, cappuccino. Or like, okay, cappuccino breakfast. will be like two euros. But mm. then if you get it with the pastry, sometimes it'll be two and a half. And Alice always knew those places. Because she actually spent, <coughs> I think, three and a half weeks studying something related to Byron there. So she oh, actually okay. was, she was, there. she was there in Venice. 
and she would used to send me pictures of spritz and like cheap pizza yeah, and I yeah. was like Alice please stop. stop right here <laughs> right now but Venice in general I think this time I went there and I was like as a photographer that was the first time when I came back so much to and eat you, up yeah you pay attention to all the small details Mm -hmm. you actually start taking every single subject on its own Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then that own building can have one building have so much history around it that Mm -hmm. it's just you 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 know you're never going to even make it from one street to another without yeah 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 so so amazing and they also have like in italy in general like northern part of italy they are quite good at exhibitions so they do like those massive interior design exhibitions yes Yes. which are just mind-blowing i went to one accidentally because yeah. i was there and alice was like well we had this massive thing happening and i was like i didn't even realize how massive it was but i was then, at the um well they have been yale been yeah yeah they're like, just there before. yeah yale exhibitions yes yeah yeah uh but then they also have like interior design exhibitions i think I in may see that. no yeah. okay then yeah soon, yeah, so yeah, yeah yeah i think Bignale just jumps in. and also they had just recently end of september i think a film festival in venice as well because alice was there yeah yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and she was like i barely missed brad pitt and i was like oh, <laughs> okay. was almost, excuse me <laughs> <laughs> yeah and um so basically yeah going to those exhibitions seeing how completely different they are mm. to whatever y- you see here. you see is is yeah. amazing but also now thinking as a photographer back in the whole thing and trying to see how much beauty was in everything then and i could not really appreciate it for yeah. the fact because it was just not able to see it was you were way. there at that time yeah, like as in you know it takes time to it does yeah to, to like see the of, beauty of the Within age comes what's the what's the quote? Within time comes I don't know something, but it takes time for you to appreciate some things. It yeah. just may not be at that time at sixteen years old or whatever. Yeah, what first time you went. But you I know. think also when I was at uni, it was all about everything needs to be grand, everything yeah. needs to be spectacular, everything needs to be like so many things oh. need to be there, and you go like, wow, this is yeah. amazing. Yeah. Whereas growing older, you're like, I don't want that. No. I want just a singular subject mm-hmm. and take them, examine them, mm-hmm. and that's what actually I like yeah. about the whole thing. So yeah, but do you think you're gonna stay? You moved to Venice? Oh, a hundred percent. You will at some Oh, a hundred percent. I know yeah. for sure. Yeah. When I make a choice, it, it normally happens. always happens. Yeah. What was the so, reaction when you said to your parents you're going to do that? They were like, okay. They, they're so used to me now, me going, okay, I'm moving here and me doing it. And so mm. they're like, okay, you know, this. So they're like, oh, we're going to have to come over for Christmas, blah, 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 blah. Um, so, yeah, no, I will, I will definitely, definitely move there for sure. What sort of writing do you do when you're on locations? Is it like what, how, like the experiences of the day? Or? No, it's more like I see something odd, like a person and then they're doing something strange mm. and it just kind of makes me laugh or makes me kind of, well, whatever it makes me feel, then I will write a short description or poetry about it. I mean, I do have some, but like, yeah. Um, <laughs> and it's usually poetry. It's usually poetry, yeah, 100%. Or like a story. A short story, but normally it's 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 poetry. It's poetry. Yeah. yeah. So now you're gonna be going back to New Zealand. Mm. Is it for a good? It will while? be. I mean, the, or what's the plan? The plan. New okay, so the plan is to relax for a few months, and then I was gonna go to university mm-hmm. um, in in Melbourne, mm. but now New Zealand has gotten 1.5 billion dollars of. Um, money put into the film industry and is we, it because of amazon uh, yes yes because really? of amazon yeah. yeah so they've invested 1.5 billion and um they're going to do lots of netflix uh and they're going to be filming the lord of the rings mm. and we know one of our family friends is in charge of hiring people and she's 3,000 people short. And so my dad rang me with it. He's like, ah, she's been talking to her. Blah, blah. And I was like, oh, this is so exciting. And so when I get home, I'll probably have coffee with her and see what I can do in terms of being immersed in that. How, and, what sort of experience you can get. Yes, exactly. Yeah. I don't mind if it's, I don't mind what I do as mm. long as I'm there and part mm. of the team. Yeah. Because I don't know, you always learn once you're on of set. Course. Absolutely. So, um, so I'm going to see what I can do. And then maybe if I get a job for a few months or even a year, I'll stick to that. Mm. Um, and so I'll stay in New Zealand for at least a year if that all goes to plan. But if not, I will be moving. 
But, he, uh, yeah. yeah. New Zealand was actually, well, in a way, lucky because it was a draw, I think, at some point. They were looking, Amazon was looking to film Ireland in Scotland. Oh, yeah. Because they had a very similar landscape for yeah. Lord of the Rings. Yes. Or to do it in New Zealand. And Scotland didn't go through because of the Brexit. They yeah. were quite oh, really? Is that scared why? of what's going to happen. Oh. So they didn't want to risk it. And I think they went to New Zealand. New Zealand. Yeah. Good. So, uh, I mean, yeah, that's good, good for you yeah, guys. Yeah, absolutely. But obviously, I've had what sort of things were happening there when initially the Lord of the Rings was filmed. I think mm. there was a lot of, um, correct me if I'm wrong, film groups, just some people in general who are in the industry being um, created in order to not protest, but usually kind of say, hey, you're not paying us a fair wage. Really? Yeah. Well, I didn't know But that. I think it was Warner Bros. Uh, Brothers. Sorry. So <laughs> Warner Bros. Doesn't make any sense. Yeah. <laughs> no, but it is Warner Bros. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. So them guys, and basically they said, we can't, we can't increase the salary. So we can't increase the budget because obviously you're not the only place where we can film. So we're going to go to somebody else. So obviously it came quite oh a kind God. of on a political level. So obviously then government had to step in and be like, okay, okay. We're going to calm the film industry guys down and we just want you guys to be here. Because obviously they brought a lot of yeah. money, but at the same time, <sighs> I think okay. the conditions were not there. Fair. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And I don't think it was for everyone. I, I think it was for the every who, who was a freelancer. Oh, okay. So okay. it's not like everyone was right. not treated. But it was the free. Yeah. It was, okay. I think it was a freelancing. So everyone who was with the freelancing background, doesn't matter if it was uh, an actor mm -hmm. or anything to do with actual mm -hmm. production. Mm -hmm. Um, but it, it was still interesting because I kind of kept my eye on it, what's going on. Rules, but I yeah. think at the moment now, they kind of created some actual even rules about it that the people could not be even going on the streets to protest about it. Yes. That oh. was the law. Okay. But now I think they actually kind of softened it down a little bit mm -hmm. and said, okay, you can form actually the groups, you can discuss as far as, you know, guys being, you know, yeah. um, violent about the whole thing. <laughs> so yeah, we'll see how's that going to go. It's so interesting. It is interesting. Yeah. But you were there when they were filming Lord of the Rings. I was there, but I wasn't there. I was there, but I wasn't interested. In yeah, so I can I imagine. There. Yeah, but that's it. But I'm just thinking, like, because New Zealand is there's not that many of you guys population wise. Like, so obviously, if they the bring million. the whole thing, it's it actually makes it very different. Crazy. Yeah. Honestly, I don't know what it's gonna. The country is gonna be like in mm. maybe five years time. Mm. It's gonna bring a lot of people in. Because there's, yeah. it's good, but not really. I mean, it's yeah. I, don't know. Um, I mean, what I've learned. When I came to UK, obviously, about the whole tourism thing, mm. we started studied the different ways of how tourism in, uh, tourism is being developed in different countries. And obviously, New Zealand was yeah. always known for being that Lord of the Rings yes. post-film location. That's what we know. For. That's yeah, literally, that's yeah. So a lot yeah. of Brits literally went for that. Yeah. If before New Zealand was not on a map, now it was. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But now that it's going to be a TV series... Mm. Do you know how long they're going to be running for? I think it's about five years, I think. Yeah, yeah. Five years? Yeah, yeah. Holy moly. Yeah. Okay, so that is... It's going to be quite big. Wow. Yeah. Okay, that's exciting for you guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, it's going to bring a lot of tourists, which is good. Um, but I think New Zealand also need to... I don't want to get any... any Say anything bad, but I think we need to tighten up on... Um, the people coming over because in New Zealand you can come over buy whatever you want you don't even have to live in New Zealand mm. and so I feel like it's gonna I don't know New Zealand have to tighten up on that because everyone's just gonna come from it I don't know oh you mean like over a tourism yeah but mm. not, no no not even tourism just living and buying up property and things oh. like that so I think it's also gonna well, I mean, yeah, with any attention, you always get a pros and cons. Exactly. Eventually, yes, you've been put in a map, but now you have to deal with all this overflowing all tourists. Thing, like, think yeah. about Venice as well. It actually yeah. breaks my heart it's seeing so how, true. That's how why I'm like, over, overpopulate. No, it's oh. not overpopulated. It's just the amount of tourists that are coming in there. It's, it's crazy. It's, yeah. Yeah. And I mean, obviously, we watch a lot of different food shows. Mm. And one of them is, uh, one of them was basically one of the... I don't remember who was the chef, but he was talking to the local chefs who are like doing the local restaurants. Yeah. So yeah. they were like saying, yeah, obviously the guys who are going on cruise ships, they're basically spending almost no money whatsoever in mm. Venice. And some of them, especially Americans, they're not spending money. Not spending money because they come on cruise ships. They oh, eat so there. They eat on the cruise ship. Ah, exactly. Then they come, they have a bit they of a. Buy maybe buy a little maybe, trinket. Exactly. They buy oh. maybe an like ice cream, they get a magnet. They yeah. spend maybe $20 and that's about it. But, but then the. But the local economy, yeah. like how does the local economy supposed to thrive on this? It can't. So obviously they are, I think, 
might have minimized the amount of ships they're allowing now through or they're in talks to do that because they were like it doesn't help our economy no. whatsoever we'd rather have people who come in here stay here eat, and here, eat here and then go really away like, yeah, yeah, yeah exactly yeah. and i think that's how it should be as well in I general think so too. i mean i saw one cruise ship when i was it's uh, it's Esther, a city. i saw literally yeah. it really was it was like what is this huge it's a thing massive thing as well doing here yeah and yeah. if you think about it from a sustainability perspective mm. the amount of waste that one thing can produce uh, yeah i don't want to even know yeah. i don't think in general it's a good thing at I all i don't really i'm no. not really into christians no but yeah. no never no. been to neither no, i've never yeah yeah and i mean they are usually advertised like 50 60 year old people who are like you know <laughs> go <laughs> stay two weeks Love it, yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah and you can travel from a yeah. to b but i'm like how lazy can you be absolutely also, right also this and B as well you don't really you see don't... the place you just stick it out for like three four hours mm-hmm. how can you experience Venice That's, in three four yeah. hours especially with the amount of crowds is there mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's just nah it doesn't make any sense and no. usually the American side of where people who will be like oh is it an attraction place isn't it what time yes. do you guys close yeah. and you're like no it's Venice it's an actual city <laughs> it's a place that's where we live yeah no I agree you can't that's what I didn't get about cruise ships you just go there for a few hours go back on and I'm like oh, mm. what are you experiencing mm. what are you but yeah. what do you think what sort of traveler are you oh I'm definitely someone who go to a place for a, a week at least mm. because I can't do the whole get there spend one or two days and then move on mm-hmm. I have to really almost become a part, per, of the a place. part of the place you know i gotta know the streets mm. without using my phone which happens you know mm-hmm. i use my phone a few days and then i don't need to mm-hmm. use my phone to navigate and that's my traveling because i like to feel comfortable if i'm always looking at my phone trying to figure out where to go i just don't feel like i'm traveling i don't feel like i'm there mm-hmm. so for me i do go to a place for at least at least a week or i mean four days to no, no. really be there you know yeah yeah is them that's and, and there's no such a ritual but like when we go to the places mm. uh we try to always go to like the closest local shop and almost like no. go there as many times as we can no. for like a small little okay. bit so then the local um, owner will be like that would know you. <laughs> it was always used to be my dream you know it's like so melancholic and cinematic in new york you know you always go to the same guy to yes. buy your tomatoes and the italian guy always wishes you a best you. day yeah. you know like that was always my thing yeah and in london i never experienced that oh, really i well, I, I mean, do that here and they uh, all say hi. Well, yes, but they never but be like, hey, me. Sandy, how are you doing? Really? How is it going? Like, you know, oh, I saved the best tomatoes to you. Like, I never have anything like this really? here. Like, I mean, because what we have, it's a Tesco Express here. Yeah, that's and, true. And then when we have a market, which we need to walk mm, to, so it's mm. like a good half an hour from here. And they kind of remember you, but we, I don't know, the the, the connection is not there. I feel you know? I. I do because I buy the same thing. Mm. So they always are like, oh, I, for one of the shops, they call me Mango because I buy mangoes just at that shop, you know? <laughs> hey, Mango, how's it going? You know? And then from another shop, they don't call me anything, but they always have a chat with me because I'm mm. always buying the same groceries. He's mm. always the same man. But, but no, I do. And then there's another shop. I just buy Snickers, which is next to my store. So whenever he come, I come in, he always laughs. It's like, because he knows what I'm getting, you know? And then I I, I have that, but not when I'm traveling, traveling. No, but I yeah, mean, no, yeah, but, but yeah. I think, I guess, because we don't have it here, I yeah. want to recreate it somewhere else. Somewhere else. So um, some, maybe something like this. Because yeah. this is a very kind, big corporations run places yeah. here. So, I mean, Basically. well, you're going to go to Waitress, Waitress is never going to... They're not going to. No. no, absolutely no, not. No, absolutely. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. and I'm not stupid. I'm not going to expect that. Yeah. No. So, but I think that's when you, you kind of want that connection somewhere. Yeah. And, uh, so you, you travel We try to. We try. Well, like, I mean, I'm not saying we, we're doing it every single time. Yeah, I yeah, think okay. we, we're quite <laughs> greedy. We want to go to as many places as we want yeah. before. So our plan always used to be go in and out, go oh in and out, send showers, make it happen, get the best out of it, get out. Now, I don't know if it's an age or whatever that mm. is. I just really want to get in and get myself immersed yes. into the whole thing. Yeah. So I think now going to the places and being quite realistic and saying, I don't care. If you really want to go on a holiday, make yeah. sure you have six days. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. I agree. And stay in that place. And I think Italy, Florence in general is where we really want to go and dive deep and, and almost there, yeah. like at some point we really wanted to go and like hire a really small car and drive around and i was oh, like i don't yes. think do that drive. like i mean but i could be, never drive yeah that's in, what i'm saying but i don't think you need to yeah, be insane you to need drive to be, there. honestly i thought we we're gonna crash 
the, when I went to Naples, I was like, okay, this is it. They're all like clunky and it's going on the other side. Yeah. I was like, what's happening? Yeah. But yeah, so you got to be brave if you want to. You really have to be brave. Yeah. Like, I mean, uh, when I was in Vietnam, um, motorcycling over there is crazy. <laughs> Did you driving. give it a go? Say it again. Did you give it a go? No, no, no. Oh, we were not driving. Say. Just a passing, yeah. like um, a street the crossing the mm-hmm. road. It was almost like you close your eyes and you pray just that don't. nobody's going to drive into mm-hmm. you. And they no, usually don't. They're usually really good. Yeah. But just in general, just get yourself over that thing and be like, okay, let's do it now. Yeah, yeah. it's crazy because they're literally driving absolutely everywhere. If they could drive through the trees, they would do it. <laughs> yeah. And with Vietnam in general as well, it's it's one motorcycle, but yeah. the whole family's on it. The ho- so it's yeah, like yeah, yeah. six, seven people. Mm-hmm. If you're lucky, if they're not trying to transport the whole house on top of it as well, because that's usually <laughs> yeah. what happens. They have a the big vases. And yeah. everything, the yeah. craziest thing we we'll saw aquariums. Oh, yeah, yeah. aquariums with fishes, fish, like fish tanks. Serious? They had six fish tanks. I was like, I don't understand. No. I yeah. don't get it. Like, eggs, fine, get it. Like, I mean, if you have loads of eggs, I mean, if eggs are going to break, I mean, yes, you're going to lose your, you know, income, yeah. but that's it. But, but fish tanks, I just I don't how understand. How is it? How is it even possible? There are some crazy books about the whole thing when you can actually buy, and it's like a photography of motorcycling in <laughs> Vietnam, literally the craziest samples of people trying to transport things, things from, on motorcycles. Crazy. Like, yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Absolutely yeah. crazy. But I think... The closest they came to this one was Rome. Rome was really crazy in terms really? of traffic. Yeah. I think we haven't been to Naples, so I'm not quite sure. But Rome in general, when it came to traffic, it was almost the same. I was scared to, to cross, cross the road. Oh my yes. God. Because I was like, there is a car is it coming like, full speed and it's big not stopping. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But whenever you see it in movies, it's all very like nicely spaced out you of know of course of course okay interesting no, there it was chaotic as hell and it wasn't yeah. even that busy for the whole thing but it's mm. just the way to drive it's like full on yeah. and then hit the brake but you're like uh, yeah <laughs> i'm on the street yeah yeah, yeah. no yeah okay so that wow, was quite okay. crazy yeah but uh, hey, Italy is Italy. I think yeah. Italy is just in general, it's just a different kind of, just, yeah, kind of people. Yeah. So apart from Italy, what's your other favorite kind of destination you've been to in Europe? Mm. Or in general. In general, I went to Norway. Oh. Yeah, that was cold. Um, <laughs> yes, it was <laughs> very cold. <laughs> you know, when you're so cold, you you start crying almost because you're just like, I can't do this. Oh, yeah. Okay. I know. Really, honestly, we went to. Um, Tromso, Tromso, mm-hmm. and we went on the water. Um, so you take a boat out, ferry out, and you can go swimming with the whales. We saw people swimming with the whales, and I thought, how? How do they how? give them like a thermal? No, they out? have a thin wetsuit, and I'm like, I'm out of the boat, and I'm already cr- trying not to cry because I'm so cold. You know, it must be a lot of vodka shots or whatever. I Absolute, don't know what they have. After, yes, snaps Bailey's, or whatever they're anything, doing. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that was wow. Mm. I thought New Zealand was beautiful, but wow, that was nature amazing. Nature next level. Yeah, nature wow. makes. And since it was a, uh, had it was winter, it was quite dark all the time. So it was a really interesting experience, just not seeing the sun. Um, mm. So yeah, it was dark all the time. And then when the sun did come up, I think for like four minutes of the day, yeah, um, it was dark. It was still dark, but kind of. A little bit. It's like it never first gets thing fully in the morning. Bright, no, right? no, no. It's just a little it's bit. It's just of that a little set. bit. And so it was really interesting experience, just being in darkness all the time. How long you were there for? We were there for four days. Wow. Four days. So did yeah. you feel like you need some? Yes. At one point, I was just like, I feel kind of claustrophobic. Mm. Yeah, and but it's normal for them. And and then during summer, they told us like. It would be three yeah. o'clock in the morning. They're just outside having beers mm. with the sun yeah. at three in the morning. I yeah. was like, that's pretty that's cool. Because <laughs> in Estonia, we have a June, I think two weeks at the end of June. Yeah. When the sun barely sets. Really? So you really need to have a really thick like cool. win- window. Oh, um, right. Like, you know. To blind. To blind to, it. Because uh, otherwise, it's just, it's just, it's not bright sun. But, but as it's you enough. said, it's, it's enough to keep you awake yes. because your body will be thinking, okay, it's really it's, bright outside. Why it's am I sleeping? Time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it oh. always confuses me. Um, I will usually travel to Sonia around that time as well yeah. from England. Yeah. And then I'm like, coming back and I'm like, oh, it's, um, this, you know, it's the time difference. It's almost what is the time difference? two hours. So oh, it's almost okay. non-existent, okay. really and truly. But then you look outside in Estonia and it's one o'clock in the morning, but it feels like it's only eight o'clock in the Ooh, evening. Okay. So it's like... Mm. 
confused.com fully Absolutely, fully yeah. and then once you get you know used to there you come back to England and you're, and you're like oh okay them. so like you have so much time but you're like no no no, no woman it's it's no so um it's an interesting experience yeah like, and, and it's a funny thing you never think of it as an experience because that's what you've been brought up in this is the usual thing for you yeah but then does. once you take been taken out of it you're like oh is that what people that's, travel here to yes. or is that not a normal thing for everyone else wow yeah what was the biggest shock for you then to come from New Zealand to London the biggest shock was as in... Or did you have any shock? Like, I mean, cultural shock or yeah. anything that really stood out for you and you were like, okay, I did not expect that to be this way. Uh, the amount of white, actually, the amount of black people here was a shock. Was it more? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> 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 I knew one other black person. Um, and then also the trains, the transport. Mm. Me... Well, you don't have? No, you have. We have one bus that goes from the city to back home but you still have to drive there but mm. everyone drives everyone has a car you have a drink car at like 16 and so it was really odd for me to see old people on the train or the bus that was weird mm. it was a shock um and then just the amount of buses and how easy it is to get around that was that was pretty crazy um and, and it's safe to think that New Zealand is quite rural right yes yes so yeah, you yeah. will never have a lot of people in no, the same place no no no, unless you're in the city. Yeah. No, absolutely not. So how was London then? That Must was crazy. Oh, Piccadilly Circus. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm a pretty patient person. Mm. Actually, I would say I'm very patient, actually. But having to walk up and down Piccadilly Circus on a Saturday, I would never do it again. Mm-mm. I got so annoyed. I went to the centre, you know, where both the cars and then there's the... Yeah, yeah like that's a small bit. That's, yeah, that's how I walk up and down. I can't do it. <laughs> there's so many bodies so many people it's too insane many people. yeah it's so yeah it's yeah a lot of people. i will usually stay away from city center yeah friday saturday don't even bother don't even all. bother honestly yeah. no it's, really it's it's suffocating sometimes it how many people there is yeah like too many yeah for even like wow and i'm like how many people are tourists and how many people are living here yeah you don't even know i don't even know because no. for me like in, in my weekends i wouldn't go shopping so then i'm like oh this must be tourists mm. you know but like if i need something i will make a time during the week to go get it you so and the only reason i'll be in the city is to go somewhere mm-hmm. um but yeah I'm, just, I'm like are these all tourists or are you guys all living here just shopping on the weekend like what so yeah because you think about it there are tourists who are coming from outside of uk but there's yes. also people who are traveling to london from uk because yes. it's like you know weekend destination mm-hmm. you want to spend some time with your yeah. family with your girlfriends with just friends so it's very popular because i i went to uni in birmingham and it was a very normal oh, thing you know yeah yeah so it was a normal thing um for yeah. families to just kind of go for a weekend in mm-hmm. London, you know, and I was just like, oh, that's cool. So yeah, it's just a lot of people who are coming that's to London. People. It's crazy. And I think I'm getting tired of it. Yeah. That, yeah, definitely. You, get, you do. Yeah. The You're, trains also, like this morning, huge delays. You kind of have to meditate because mm-hmm. they stop like, uh, what's it called? In the tunnels. Oh, right. And in it's the middle. hot, it's packed and they're there for, and you're just like, yeah, I, w- I won't miss that. Yeah, but yeah, totally. Yeah, because of things sitting on a car and driving amongst mountains <laughs> and forests. Yeah, totally. Yeah. We don't have mountains in Estonia. It's a pretty flat really? country. Yeah, it's a pretty mm. flat country. Um, it's just before the fun begins. So we're like closest to Finland. As soon as you move, uh, like okay, as soon yeah. as you go to Finland, so mm-hmm. like Helsinki will be pretty flat oh, as well. But then as soon as you kind of walk, not walk, sorry, drive actually, like maybe a good 500, 600 kilometers up, that's when it becomes a little bit more hillier yeah. and then mountains, mountains, mountains. So yeah, we're not lucky enough at this one, but we have a lot of forest. Really? And I think for me, um, when you travel from A to B, mm-hmm. you literally always, you, you can clearly see in Estonia, like, this is where the city ends. That's where the forest <laughs> starts. And then when the forest ends, and that's where the city starts. Yeah. Whereas we went to Bavaria. Oh, okay. And How is it's so dense. Okay. Like, you As in never buildings s- and people? Um, just villages obviously Village, they're not okay. massive cities they're just but smaller they're quite, villages but they're yeah. so next to each other yeah, that, quite, that the okay, only yeah. thing that basically separates them from one to another is a sign that says this is the village stops now and there is another village starts now <laughs> so it's so densely populated and yeah. i just couldn't understand how is it even possible for me in my head it's like it should be like you know you have your a, a little yeah yeah you yeah. have to have your forest in the middle like that's how it to works separate. Yeah, 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 yeah 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 and in the uk it's 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 kind of almost the same as mm. well of, of course you will have loads of fields 
but then there will be places which are just like on top of each other Ooh. straight away. Oh, yeah, like, yeah. Whoa, yeah. this is crazy. The houses, are the houses like that in Estonia? Like you have like a building and you all have your own little part. In- it depends. Um, in a city, you also have a block house. Okay. Like big block house. house. Okay. Block, yeah. And That's- then obviously, as soon as you move out from the capital, yeah. more often than not, there will be just a house on its own. Yes, for that's a family. what I'm used to. And, you know, you have a fence. Yes. We yeah. used to say, in Estonia, there's a very good saying, says that we love our neighbors so much that we put very high fences between each other. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Oh, my God. No, I mean, we do no, get but, along. And yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, a yeah. normal thing in Estonia, yeah. like when the village I'm from, like everyone who lived on that street know each other. So yeah. my mom used to get like... that's nice, though. That's nice. That's yeah, really my mom nice. used to get eggs from this like old lady yeah. and we'd get like milk from this like milkman. Yeah. So that was a normal thing and mm. that's how I grew up up and i love it i love that yeah. we don't we didn't have that but i i love that yeah i, I think it's yeah i know and i always i heard stories like i don't know about estonia but mm-hmm. i hear stories like it'd be christmas time or the night before christmas what is that christmas eve, eve? yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um people would go out and you'd have drinks on the street or something or i think it's very american now is it i think I so think, oh, in estonia okay. we don't do that i really i yeah. always i would love to think very yeah it's a very charming. romantic feeling yes, exactly. isn't it yeah like people just coming to your house and you know you have open door and i just i just thought that was quite cute quite yeah nice i'd love to i mean yeah that would be lovely and i guess maybe somewhere in, yeah you know nordic countries they maybe do yeah. that but i know yeah. nordic people in general are quite cold people in general they're okay. like they're they need s- time to warm up they love their you know privacy yeah you know having yeah. it's just the way they've been brought up like okay. in estonia it's, it's almost like the same like i have my house and then i have a massive fence around it yeah. and that's just like that's this it. is me yeah if i want to talk to you i will go and make an effort but otherwise don't Leave even. Me alone. <laughs> yeah so oh, okay. um so this is how it is and i think yeah americans maybe do that, do that. Um, okay. but also maybe it's just a very good production team behind it trying yeah. to create this beautiful <laughs> memory out of something that maybe it? they wanted to have when they were children well, yeah, yeah i don't know yeah because okay, now sounds- like when i'm looking at the movies um i'm always now paying attention to the angles oh yeah like this is me yeah, yeah like yeah. If before it used to be just a movie mm. now it's like okay why is this person saying those things okay they show this detail that must that detail must be important mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so almost like 15 minutes and you pretty much know how the movie is gonna end so yeah. sometimes i try not to think about this because that's kind of the whole yeah. thing um but it's very difficult oh yeah 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 so how do you dis- like do For you me? like to do the same um not so much anymore mm. but when i was starting out i was always always paying attention to that paying mm. attention to a, why they would say this or oh this wouldn't make sense blah blah, blah. Mm-hmm. um but now i have learnt to enjoy a movie i still of course you see the things that other people don't see mm. but um yeah no i i really try to enjoy it because that's why i started you know I- because you enjoyed the movie, mm. not because you enjoyed pulling it apart. And yeah. so I was like, you know what? Just enjoy it. Enjoy this fantasy that someone's created for you to watch mm. for a short amount of time. So, yeah, no, I, I – if it's a bad movie, yes, I pull it apart and rip it to pieces. <laughs> but if, it, if it's engaging enough, I, okay, I will just forget let myself. Yeah. Wow. But then sometimes something will pull you out of it and then – You'll be yeah. like, why? Yeah. Yeah. But we usually sit there and think, okay, was it a director's choice mm-hmm. or was it a production team sure. slash investment company mm-hmm. came and said, we don't want that. We, we want don't that. want that. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, according to our stats, mm-hmm. you have to do this. Yes. And according to our stats, you don't have to do this. So this is the creative decision that has to go away. And this yeah. is the almost the corporate decision that is like, That's... we're going to do the movie by this because yeah. 5% said that they would like to see more action 10 percent that they said they want to see more female artists in it and that's how it's been built lately that's what i'm kind of worried about in the later future if i get to the point which i will get to the point where i have to work with these people like producers and i have to kind of change everything because of a board said this you Mm. know um i don't really want to get to that point i really want to have a lot of control over the creativity of a film Mm -hmm. but again if you get to that point you don't really have a lot of say yeah yeah and I don't don't really want to get to that point um but I do you know yeah of course because you have to you have bills to pay and you have the life to live absolutely that's how you're gonna get but I think it just comes to the point that there are jobs that they pay you Mm. 
and there are jobs that creatively fulfill you mm. and you need to find a balance Between so those. there needs to be something that pays your yeah. bills there needs to be something that creatively uh, that nurtures you, you. Yeah. and yeah. doesn't let you go insane yeah and i think that's the writing is for you that you yeah. always have to find that balance uh, yeah. for us it was photography walks <laughs> Uh, now it's a podcasting, yeah, yeah, it's just yeah, in general, so I think it's really good for your soul. <laughs> and it's really good to kind of sit down with someone talk. and yeah, talk. It really know, is it's, good. It's nice. Yeah. And um, maybe there will be something else in the future. Mm. But for now, I feel like um, this is kind of what keeps us afloat. Um, there is a lot of trial to find. Mm. What oh, will trial and error. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think that's something that a lot of people do not Realize. account for. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Even I, I didn't. Yeah. I was just like, if I'm doing it, if I'm already putting my hours into then it, it, well just... it needs to happen. Exactly. And when it didn't, yeah. you just kind of go like, oh, you kind of crumble now? and you're like, what? Yeah. It, yeah. That's having to understand it's, mm. it's trial and error until it's. But it's almost like a universe saying to you, just because you try doesn't necessarily mean that you have to succeed in that. Absolutely. And then, and then there is another saying as well. If you succeed in everything, maybe you're not trying hard enough. Doesn't oh make sense. yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Because if you succeed in everything, then you're not putting yourself you're not into the more difficult situations. Things. You're just being in your comfort zone. Yeah, that will let yeah. you grow. Yeah. So I think, and then when you kind of start to think about that, you kind of go, okay, fine. Then the failure obviously is a very important part of the process, and people yeah. say that, mm-hmm. and that's exciting. But then one thing is to say, another thing is to realize it. Yeah. Yeah. And oh, when, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Especially in the moments when you're the lowest, mm-hmm. be like, yeah, I'm okay with that. Well, I mean, no. No. Yeah. Because you are sitting there and you're thinking like, why? Yeah. Um, but then, yeah, it's just uh, trying to overcome that by just thinking this way and that's it. Yeah. So yeah, happy times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, what, just before we kind of go and finish. Yeah. Where do you see yourself? <laughs> what would be the dream scenario for you now? My dream scenario. My dream scenario. Oh, I can just hear myself. I know. <laughs> um, I would love to be able to work from home. My dream scenario is to be wake up, get paid to write. Mm-hmm. So writing is... To the- writing is... I know, I, like you said, trial and error, I started off with acting. Though I appreciate the whole acting process and things, I've had to come to terms that it's okay not to maybe head in that direction, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, I love the acting, but I always go back to the writing. Mm. I always go back to the thinking about directing. And so, yeah, my dream goal is to be able to work from home, write and get paid for it. And also not only just doing scripts, doing my own, I'd love to have a book out, a poetry book, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah. I, that's still what I writing. Like to, still writing. But directing is still very closely associated with that. Yes. And when you mean by this, then it will be writing a script and then directing and it. Directing it, yeah. Wow. Absolutely. Okay. But those are two very different skill sets there. Um, yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I but, don't even know why I did say that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, they are, but um They equally They kind of they kind of work together obviously yeah. you know there's yeah. a lot of writer directors out there i mean we i guess we have as directors we have a story that want we want to get told mm. that we want to tell and no one else is going to write that for us right okay so obviously we're gonna have to write it and then film it so yeah yeah so if the choice is i think it's very obvious but i still want to know um if the choice is you're being a director and being given a script to yeah. direct mm. or you're going to be a writer writing for somebody else to direct. I would love to, I wouldn't like to write for someone else to direct. Right. Okay. Unless it's a film that's not that dear to me. Right. But I write. Very intimately. So you yes, really. So it's really, a lot of it is based heavily on me mm-hmm. and, um, I wouldn't, I don't know. I'd you wouldn't to, trust I'd, anyone. Yes, I'd have to find someone who I really gel with and really trust to get, portray that. Right. Um, so, yeah, no. Directing. Directing. In this case, in this case we'll yeah. be directing. But then again, I have to learn to, you know, <laughs> let go and give my Oh, yeah. Advice. Is yeah. that not a part of the life? Exactly. It really is. Yeah. Just at some point, you just kind of be like, you just that's Pass fine. it on. That's, that's for you to, yeah. 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 That was my baby, but now I think it's time to you to care of it. Absolutely. It is, though. Yeah. It's, uh, it's your baby. You don't want anyone else to, to touch it, but... 
<laughs> it doesn't really work like that. Life doesn't really work like that. Right, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Well, thank you so very much for coming in. Thank you for having me. I just I enjoyed just talking to you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I learned so much and I'm so excited for you. I'm really hoping that everything is going to work out for you in New Zealand. I mean, why wouldn't it? Yeah. Really and truly send us postcards. Of being like, <laughs> I will. Hey guys, no, I'm here. but you guys have to come to New Zealand. <laughs> it's the Lord of the Rings happening. I know. Come I on. know. I know. Honestly. It's just so far away, but it's always been <laughs> one of my kind of dream places. Yeah. Because every single travel I'm, I'm. Haven't you been? I thought you were in. New Zealand. Oh, I, I think the furthest we went or closest we went to that area was Bali. Oh, everyone goes to Bali. <laughs> oh no, I know, I know. That was like, uh, yeah, Bali was definitely, it was just one of those things where yeah. Instagram boomed in and I was like, oh my yeah. God, Bali. <laughs> <laughs> I still want to go to Bali, kind of shamefully. But no, I mean, like, listen, as for, yeah. everyone takes what it is. I just, in general, don't think it deserves such a PR as it is having at the moment now. Oh, really? But then, I, I don't know. I, I just generally thought I had been in a more beautiful, better places. Okay. But um, it's just me. Yeah. Maybe it's just me trying, like having those very high expectations and versus then, what was reality yeah. was having there. It's not yeah. really Bali's fault, is it? Though, <laughs> no, can't really blame the people <laughs> who like build it up to those beautiful, yeah. fascinating things, and you yeah. literally create a dream scenario. And I think at that point in my head or in my life, I was looking for this fairy taleish um, escape place, mm-hmm. and Bali was that yeah. for me. And, and then obviously, yeah, it live didn't deliver. No, like there are certain places which are really beautiful, mm. but you really need to be uh, very good at toning out all the rubbish that mm. there is there and kind of concentrating on the beautiful things. Yeah. And I didn't realize there were going to be so many Australians. I didn't have oh, anything. It's like, Kiwi in so, Australia. It's, it really it's is. Kiwi in Australia. It's like, surface as yeah, well. <laughs> literally. Because then, obviously, all the Brits go to Spain. Yeah. And that's how exactly They do, how, though. Yeah, that's how it's spent. Like, I think Australians were treating yeah, Bali. Bali, Like, yeah. everywhere I went to, it was like Australian accent everywhere. Yeah. Like, Australian TV was on. There was yeah. one day when we were struggling with Bali Belly and we didn't go anywhere. Oh. And we were just, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was fine. We were knackered. It was one of the last days and I was like, you know, I'm having a quiet time in, in a hotel. It'll be actually mm. quite nice. And we were literally just like constantly watching the TV and the TV was with Australian TVs. Uh, like a channel. TV should die. Yeah. Really? Yeah. In Bali? In Bali. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that sucks. That sucks a little bit. But what? then, I mean, I don't understand Malaysian, so I think... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. so, so we were just like looking and then they have like the equivalent of programs that they have yeah. in UK and something similar they will have something there it was quite funny to see the humour mm, and how mm. the local people are oh, like yeah. I mean yeah I've never been to Australia so at that point I was like wow that's like pretty cool <laughs> um, so yeah but the Bali was Bali yeah so in general we definitely want to go to New Zealand and um, I'm fascinated by the landscapes so oh, yeah. really want to come there mm. and I'm actually just quite excited to walk around you know fields of no oh. people <laughs> yay <laughs> i'm such a human lover <laughs> <laughs> but that's oh, it yeah. yeah so anyways thank you so very much thank you and for having me absolutely it's been an absolute pleasure i'm and gonna miss you guys oh why are you going <laughs> <laughs> don't <No>. go <laughs> yeah, i have to it's time okay but say hi to your mom <laughs> i will <laughs> okay okay guys thanks bye thank you. bye <laughs> Oh wow, oh, oh wow, that God. sounds so every single time I take them down, oh, you're like so weird. it's so crazy. Thank oh you so much. Ears. Thank you. You're hearing it right? Yeah. <laughs>